Welcome to my channel. I love Naruto time travel fanfiction, so I thought you may enjoy it too. Please comment to let me know if you want to see a part 2. Also, please like and subscribe to support my channel. Summary, time travel story. Naruto died in the fourth shinobi war. Kami granted him a boon, returned him to his body with his and Kurama's memories of the future intact. This time, Naruto vowed to do things differently. Naruto was floating. He didn't know where he was or what he was doing floating around without a care in the world, but he knew one irrefutable fact, he died. That's right, he, Uzumaki Naruto, died. He couldn't fully stop Madara and Abito's plan. Not because he was killed, not because his skill wasn't up to snuff. No, he died because he overestimated his body in using Karama's chakra. As he was about to deal the final blow using an overpowered, oversized QB-powered raisin shuriken, his body simply shut down allowing Abito to command the Jubi to obliterate his body in a single Imari while in midair. Naruto knew that even with his unshakable determination, there was no way to escape death. He was dead and he left his friends behind to defeat the Jubi. He believed in their success, but he knew that lives would be lost in the process. He didn't know how long he was floating around in the darkness. He tried to delve into his mindscape to see if Kurama was still there, but couldn't because he could no longer feel his partner. That thought made him sad since that was another promise he didn't fulfill. What would you do if you were offered a chance to do it all over again? Naruto was startled when a voice spoke in his head. What would you do if you were offered a chance to do it all over again, Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto, the voice asked again. If I am given another chance to save my precious people then I'll take it. Naruto answered without a second thought, his determination behind his voice. I see, along with this offer, if you were offered a boon, anything from powers to a favor, what would you ask to aid you in this task, the voice asked, this time with a hint of humor. Naruto was silent as he pondered the question. What gift would he ask for? What favor would be important enough to help him? A grin appeared on his face as he answered. I would ask for Karama and my memories of the future. The voice didn't answer for a few minutes before a bright light engulfed him. Done. Good luck, child of prophecy. Good luck, Naruto, the voice boomed, but Naruto sensed the underlying love and kindness that made him feel warm and wanted. Naruto knew then that he was offered a chance by Kami, and this time around, he wasn't going to fail. He was going to make sure that everything turns out good for everyone. He was Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto. He was going to succeed, believe it. Kami gave herself a mental pat on the back for a job well done. The first part of the prophecy she gave to the toads was complete. It was part of her game plan that the child of prophecy, her chosen one, would return because he lacked the mental aptitude and training to achieve what she wanted in the previous timeline. Now, the second part of the prophecy was in play and she couldn't help but give out a giddy laugh at the thought of all the chaos her little blonde Jinchuriki would do on this timeline. Realizing that she could make this better and ensure that her child would succeed in the task she laid out in front of him, she released a pulse of power to give the blonde a helping hand. All over the elemental nations, eight beasts of power were startled when a stream of memories flowed into their minds. They recognized the energy signature that came with the memories and they all instinctive knew what to do. The Wheel of Destiny turns for one Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto. Naruto woke up with a groan trying to remember what happened to him. One moment he was floating in nothingness, spoken to by a melodious voice that he knew came from Kami, then engulfed in a really bright light and nothing. He opened his eyes to see the ceiling of his run-down apartment. He mentally cheered that he was back to set things right, but he wasn't prepared when a gruff voice interrupted him. Would you mind toning it down, Kit? You're giving me a migraine. Naruto paused when he recognized the voice in his head. He did the only thing he could. He immediately went into his mindscape, appearing in front of a large cage, ran in between the bars, and jumped with all of his strength into the face of one startled bijou. Kurama. Kurama chuckled before plucking out a happy Naruto from his face and placed him down on the watery ground. 
He was quite surprised that he was still alive since the last thing he remembered was him and Naruto being vaporized by the Jubi's potent Imari. He didn't know why he was still alive, judging from the boy in front of him, they were in the past. Was it all a dream or did they really travel back in time? You know, Kit, you can't just seem to stop from doing the impossible. Kurama said in an odd tone before chuckling in amusement. Huh, was all Naruto said with a tilt of his head in confusion. I don't know what happened, but from the looks of it, we are back in the past. You look like a ten-year-old, the bijou said bluntly, speculatively eyeing his partner's rather diminutive form. I think it would be safe to say that you are ten years old, give or take a few months. Naruto gave the fox a skeptic look before looking down at his body. The fox was right, he was definitely small, and he recognized the clothes he was wearing. He clearly remembered that the orange shirt and blue pants he was wearing was given to him by the Sandame on his 10th birthday, but he lost it a few months later after making a mess of it during his pseudo-training. He saw his reflection on the water at his feet and could help but curse. Shit. So let me get this straight. You remember floating in the void and you heard a voice in your head asking what you would do if offered a second chance. You answered that you'd take it and do it right this time. The voice then asked what gift or favor you want. You answered by making sure that yours and mine's memories of the future are intact. The next thing you know, you find yourself alive in your apartment before coming into the mindscape when you heard my voice. Did I leave anything out? Kurama asked with disbelief. It would seem that not only was his partner lucky, he was also blessed considering Kami herself granted him a second chance and a boon. He was also touched that the boy asked for nothing but their memories instead of ultimate power. The boy was definitely a fool to waste such a chance, but he was a lovable and kind fool. He was his fool and Kurama wouldn't have it any other way. Yep. Naruto said cheerfully before his face turned serious, one that Kurama recognized as the boy's game face. I think we need to plan this carefully. If we are going to beat Madara and Abido, and stopping the Jubi from being resurrected, we need to stick to the timeline and make sure that all preparations are in place. Agreed. The events leading up to before the Jubi must be maintained to ensure that we have full control. If we deviate from the timeline, then you can be sure that something new will happen. I take it that you're not putting on your idiot mask this time around? Kurama asked mildly. He knew that Naruto only acted the knucklehead ninja because he knew what would happen if he showed everyone that his brains weren't just fluff. The civilians would practically have a field day over it. This time, however, the boy seemed to be deciding against it. I think it's time that Kanoha learns of the real Uzumaki Naruto. Naruto declared with a glint in his eyes. Kurama, can I rely on you to help me set things right? I know I'm not the smartest bloke on the block, so I will need your input if we plan to make this right. I have your back, Kit. You're my partner after all. Kurama said with a huge grin on his face. Thanks, partner. Naruto grinned. Now all we need to do is to get you out of that cage. That's impossible at the moment. Kurama said with a grunt. Eh? You're currently ten years old, Kit, so you don't have the key to open the lock. The only way for you to acquire the key is to summon the toads. As it stands, the only way for you sign their contract is during the one month break before the finals of the Chunin exam when you meet that perverted sensei of yours. Kurama answered, pointing out to the boy that he didn't sign the toad contract yet. Hell, the boy wasn't even a shinobi yet. Darn it. But I can still train using your chakra, right? Naruto asked, frowning as he tried to work around the training plans he had in his head. He already thought of using shadow clones to speed up his learning curve while he concentrates on improving his body's adaptability and resistance to Kurama's chakra. Oh well. He was always good at improvisation anyway, so this wasn't anything new. Why do you need my chakra? Kurama asked, confused. The boy already had chakra in spades, so what in the world was the boy planning? The reason why we failed is because my body wasn't accustomed to using your chakra. 
My body simply shut down when I did the Raisin Shuriken to destroy Abido, Madara, and the Jubi. I was thinking that if I trained with your chakra every day, my body would eventually get used to your energy so I can last longer with it without breaking down, explained Naruto to a rather intrigued Bijou. Heck, with my healing factor, it's quite possible that I can stay in tailed beast mode for hours without getting tired or my body shutting down on me. That's way better compared to the 5 minute limit in the previous timeline. Hmm, that's a good idea, but you don't need to open the gate in order to use my chakra. Well, you do if you plan to go 9 tails chakra mode or the tailed beast mode, but anything lesser won't require releasing me from this prison. Karama pointed out. Seeing the confused look on the boy's face, he decided to explain. If you remember, the first time you used my chakra was during the wave mission when you encountered Haku. Granted, I was trying to control you that time so you succumbed to the bloodlust. Oh. You mean I can use your chakra now without me blacking out and you controlling my body? Naruto said with a sly grin on his face mimicked by the bijou. Nah, considering that I now know that Madara and Abito is out there with their evolved Sharingan, I definitely don't want to get out since they can easily control me. With me inside you, there is no way for them to do so. Besides, I like you and we both promised each other to be partners so I have no problems with you using my chakra. However, I will be limiting the chakra use since I don't want you to rely on it too much. You don't have to worry about that, partner. I will only use your chakra as a last resort. Besides, considering that I'm still 10 years old, I still have 5 more years to train before I graduate from the academy. That was my original plan to train as hard as I can during the academy years while masking what I can do to avoid suspicions. Naruto said seriously making Karama nod in agreement. Good, I will also be doing the same thing myself, but this time around, I'm going to give you something that I haven't done before. What's that? Naruto asked curiously, not knowing what his partner was trying to say. Jinchurikis by nature acquire the traits of the bijou they hold. For example, Shikaku allows Gara to control sand. Matatabi allows her Jinchuriki to control intense flames. Chome grants his Jinchuriki to manifest his wings to fly. Even the slug gave his container the ability to use bubbles. Each of my brothers can give their hosts a unique skill as part of the package of being containers. I didn't give you one because I was, um, unwilling at that time, refraining myself from modifying your body to grant you the ability. This time, however, I'm not going to make the same mistake. Since we have a mission, withholding a power that would prove useful to our survivable is just a recipe for disaster. Whoa! That's great! What ability are we talking about here? Naruto asked excitedly. He was somewhat confused as to why he didn't display similar powers as with the other Jinchuriki. Now he knew why. A thought occurred to him. Hey, isn't my advanced healing factor already a Jinchuriki trait? Karama shook his head in negative. No. Actually, your healing factor comes from the Yang Chakra sealed inside me as it continues to bleed into your system in small increments. As you know, Yang Chakra is called Light or Life Chakra since it is connected to the physical realm. The Yandame used the Shiki Fujin to separate my Yin and Yang Chakra, sealing the Yin Chakra into the Shinigami but leaving the Yang Chakra since it is too much for the entity to consume. Because of the Yang Chakra's life-giving properties, you acquired a fast healing factor as a side effect. Oh. I didn't know that. That's cool, I guess. Naruto mused. So what ability are you going to give me? You already used this ability many times when using my chakra though I was the one controlling it at that time. This time, however, I will give you this ability so you can use it with your chakra. The ability is called the Chakra Shroud. Isn't that that the thing covering me when I'm using your chakra? Naruto asked, remembering the times he used Kurama's energy. Yes, however, I'll tweak your DNA so you can use the shroud using your own chakra. Meaning, you can call it up anytime without needing my help. You will still need to train with it since it would be somewhat harder for you to manipulate your chakra to produce the shroud without me doing it for you. 
The Shroud also comes with different abilities, but we can talk about that later. Kurama explained to an excited Naruto. Anyway, what's your plan? We might as well discuss it now since we have nothing better to do. HM, my plan so far involves training myself, getting back the skills I have before we died. Naruto said with a frown. I can use Kage Bunshin to get as much training as I could before the five-year academy period is up. I'll also train myself in your chakra and the chakra shroud while I'm at it. This time, however, I'm not going to limit myself to Sage Mode and my Rasengan variants. If I want to bring down Madara and Abito, then I need to have a more flexible skill set to work with. Good. I think you can make use of the library beside the academy to help you with your education. I remembered Mito talking about it while I was sealed inside her. Mito? Naruto asked. This was the first time Kurama talked about his previous Jinchurikis. Uzumaki Mito, the wife of Senju Hashirama, the Shodame Hokage. The seal she used to restrain me was more loose compared to the one your mother had. I could hear and see everything through her senses unlike your mother's that blocked me off entirely from the physical world. I remember her talking to the Shodame about the construction of a library and having it contain the basics of shinobi arts for those who are willing to learn and improve themselves, minus clan techniques of course. You can check it out if there are books there to help you in your training. If not then we can work around what you know and try to ask advice from your sensei later. Thanks for the advice, Kurama. Now, let's plan. Naruto said with a determined glint in his eyes mirrored by the bijou in front of him. Naruto spent most of the day planning with Kurama and making sure that there were no holes in their strategy to avoid putting a win on Madara and Abito's plot. They both decided that no one should know of their status as time travelers since that would only complicate the timeline if that person's action deviates from the norm. However, they would nudge key people to make things more advantageous for them. The first thing they added to their to-do list was to make sure that Haku and Zabuza survives during the wave missions Haku for being Naruto's friend and Zabuza as Haku's master and precious person. Both would be a great help to Konoha, and Naruto was sure that the Sandame wouldn't mind adding the two to the village's shinobi ranks if he asked. The next would be Sasuke and Sakura. With his knowledge of the future, Naruto knew that both would become powerful with their innate abilities in the shinobi arts, Sasuke in ninjutsu and kinjutsu, while Sakura excelled in taijutsu and medical jutsu. Nudging the two would be complicated, but Naruto could work around that if necessary. Both were smart enough to see logic if he pointed them out. Such was the case, Naruto decided to stay as the class idiot so he would end up being in their team. Kurama was a bit hard to convince regarding Sasuke, but the bijou couldn't deny the fact that an Uchiha in their camp would make things better in the long run. In order to get this working, he needed to befriend the two during the academy and get them to train with him. Naruto knew that this would be a challenge, a challenge he had no problems diving into. The Chunin exam was also important, but this time around, Naruto would make sure that his team would pass in flying colors. He also needed to prepare for Orochimaru and to make sure that the snake wouldn't be able to mark Sasuke since that was the reason why the person he considered a brother went down the dark path. He also needed to work with Jiraiya. He and Kurama realized that they needed to reveal what they know to the Toad Sage in order to access the key to release Kurama from the seal and giving Naruto the ability to access QB Chakra Mode and Tailed Beast Mode. Thankfully, because of him and Kurama's partnership, he could go up to seven tails without succumbing to the bloodlust. Speaking of the snake, Naruto would make sure that the Sandame survives the invasion. Since there was no way to stop it without revealing his knowledge of the future, he would have to prepare so he could bail out his surrogate grandfather before he ended up doing the Shiki Fujin and sacrificing his life just to get rid of Orochimaru's arms. He also needed to deal with Gara, but he was sure that he could get it done easily thanks to his partnership with Kurama and knowing the boy's weakness and breaking him out of Shikaku's grip. He was playing with the idea of possibly recruiting Jiraiya to make a better seal for Gara to minimize Shikaku's influence so his Jinchuriki brother could sleep. He didn't need to plan for Tsunade since, if his assumption was correct, 
the Sandame would still bring her back as the Godame since he was getting too old to keep his position. He was way due for a retirement after all. Naruto and Kurama decided to end their planning for now since they had too much on their plate at the moment. If there was one thing both learned during the battle in the future, having too much in their mind would just cause them to miss important details that would give them a headache in the long run. Naruto woke up sometime around dawn. The sun wasn't up yet, but from the light on the horizon, it would be an hour or two away when the sun finally shows itself to the world. He was quite thankful that Kami had the foresight to return him to a time and place conducive to acclimating to a new surrounding after experiencing his death. He was also thankful that Kami returned him at the start of the summer after his first academy year. He frowned upon realizing that he would have to fail twice to be in the same class as his friends in the previous timeline. It might be humiliating considering Watho was capable of, but if he wanted this to work then, he would have to suck his pride and deal with it. Since it was already morning, he decided to take a bath and grab something to eat before his training, which ended up being ramen since he didn't have anything in stock for a healthy meal. That was one of the things he needed to change. Ramen was good and all but it ended up stunting his growth and power. If he wanted to excel in his training that he needed to eat well and eat right. He didn't have problems acquiring food since he could buy some with his orphan allowance, under Henge of course, since some stores always kick him out or hunt for some meat in the forest thanks to his survival training with Jiraiya in the wilderness. He also made a mental note to clean his apartment since it didn't suit his 18-year-old mind living in a dirty place. His morning routine done, Naruto exited his apartment and ran all the way to a secret training ground he knew behind the Hokage Monument. Since he wanted to hide his training then the usual grounds were off limits until he became Jinin. Of course, training ground 7 was off limits even if he wanted to go there. While running, Naruto noticed that he was a bit clumsy with his movements. That's because your 18-year-old mind is not used to your 10-year-old body. This is the reason why you need to train so you can move like you used to. Kurama told him while relaxing behind his cage. I thought as much. Naruto replied. Anyway, we're here. Not much to work with if you ask me. Kurama noted as he used his connection with Naruto to see through the boy's eyes. Naruto's secret training ground was a simple forest clearing behind the Hokage Monument. It was quite a distance from the village so it was hidden and he could train in peace. Thankfully, there were plenty of trees and a small river for chakra control exercises and some boulders for strength and taijutsu training. All in all, it was enough to help the boy get things started. So what are you going to work on first? I'll work on my coordination first. Physical exercise and doing some laps would be a great way to get back the control I have on my body. When that's done, let's see if I can still bring out the usual amount of Kage Bunshins to help me with chakra control. Said Naruto while taking off his shirt since he didn't want to get it sweaty from his workout. He made a mental note to purchase some training gears to add to his closet. Civilian clothes wouldn't last a day of hardcore training so shinobi gears were in his list to buy. Carry on then. I'm going to take a nap. Wake me up if you need my help or something, said Kurama before Naruto felt the mental link go down. Naruto chuckled before starting his workout. The clearing was sizable, comparable to half of the Kanoha Stadium, so he started with 20 laps of light jogging to get his mind used to working with his 10-year-old self. It took him two hours to finish before starting with 10 laps of running at full speed. He was panting like a maniac after the last lap. He still had his legendary stamina, but it was limited now thanks to how young he was. He wasn't worried though since training could fix that in a few years, if not months considering who he was carrying in his gut to speed up the process. He took a 10 minute break to meditate before spending an hour going through the Gama Ken since it was a good workout to get his muscle control back. After 5 hours of constant movement, he finally achieved full control over his body. He was sad that he lost his previous power and speed, vowing to continue his training to reach his previous strength and then some since he had an early start. He caught a few fish in the river for lunch and cooked them over a small fire as he relaxed on the soft grass. 
After lunch, he decided to see if his chakra was enough to perform his favorite technique. Karama, you up? Naruto asked his tenant as he put out the fire on his makeshift stove. I am now. What do you need, Kit? The bijou asked with a yawn. I got full control of my body, and I'm going to see if I have enough chakra for Kage Bunshin. Can you monitor my chakra levels and give me a bit of a boost just in case it dangerously low? I don't want to suffer chakra exhaustion just because I overdid it. Sure. Go for it. Karama assured him. Here we go. Naruto clasped his hand together and started channeling his chakra. Nothing happened at first before waves of blue energy escaped his body forming a small shroud around him, not noticing that the shroud was taking on a for-like appearance. Karama noticed it but decided against informing his host for now. What's the verdict? You have a fifth of the chakra reserve you had from your future self. If what I sensed is correct, you have slightly below when you first did the Kage Bunshin against Mizuki. Check your control over your chakra before performing the Jutsu. Karama suggested as he continued to observing Naruto's chakra from within, ready to replenish just in case the boy overdid it. Gotcha. Naruto agreed before bringing his chakra under control. He walked over to a tree and placed a foot on the trunk as he channeled his chakra to make it stick. He tested it a few times until he found the right amount for the exercise. He decided to walk instead of running up the tree unlike the first time he was taught by Kakashi Sensei. He wobbled a bit as he felt his control slip from time to time, but he got it under control quickly so he didn't fall. He walked up and down a few times until he was confident that he had average control over his chakra. He'll have his clones work on the exercise later to fully master it again. Now let's see how many clones I can bring out, said Naruto as he made the hand sign for his trademark jutsu. Kage Bunshin no jutsu. Smoke materialized around him before dispersing to reveal 50 smirking clones. What's the damage? Naruto asked his partner, panting slightly from the effort of the technique and controlling his chakra. He definitely need to master tree climbing and water walking again if he wanted his proficiency with the technique to return. 50% chakra loss, but I'm already refilling it now as we speak. I noticed that refilling is slow compared to when the seal was unlocked, but we can get by. Karama reported, sending his chakra out in increments towards Naruto's coils to replenish the blonde's reserves without damaging his body. Great. It worked then. I was aiming for something lower, but I guess this is good enough with what control I have over my chakra. Naruto mused before turning to his expectant clones. All right, guys, time to get our chakra control up. Half of you pick a tree and start climbing using chakra until you run out while the rest of you trying out water walking. Let's get to it, boys. Hi, the clones shouted before going to their respective tasks. Naruto could help but be amused at their antics before joining the tree climbing clones. Naruto used the three months of break from the academy to train himself physically. He took a page out of Rock Lee's book and used weights to augment his strength and speed. Kurama assured him that using weights early wouldn't hinder his growth since his healing factor would take care of it. Trusting his partner, Naruto used Henge to disguise himself and bought two pairs of weights, one for his hands and the other for his legs. This way, he was training his upper and lower body at the same time, getting twice the results he aimed for. He also purchased kunais and shurikens with what's left of his allowance since he needed to work on his accuracy as well. Naruto planned his training program with a little help from Kurama. Morning would be for strength and speed training, first half of the afternoon for his accuracy with kunai and shuriken, and followed by raisin training. Of course, his clones worked overtime in chakra control to supplement the relearning of his father's signature move. This time, however, Naruto decided to retrain himself with the Raisin without a clone to help him produce the correct shape transformation. Since he wasn't on a time limit, he trained himself with each step of the Raisin until he could do it in less than a minute and later try to bring it out instantly if possible. He didn't worry about the latter though since he won't be going to battle anytime soon. Kurama pointed out, 
much to Naruto's delight, that the steps of the Raisingan were chakra control exercise all by itself since it was purely shaped transformation. The first step was controlling and manipulating his chakra to produce different rotations within the space of his palm. The second step was controlling his chakra to produce the optimal power for the jutsu. The third step was using every focus and control he had to produce a dense coat of chakra around the spinning construct, thus completing the Raisingan. With this discovery, Naruto's determination to master the technique shot through the roof since he now had another reason to get his father's jutsu mastered. Naruto stood in the center of the clearing, his eyes closed and hands relaxed on his side. He was currently in a cocoon of potent red chakra that formed the shape of a fox, with the ears and tail being the most prominent feature. He grunted as his body twitched when a second tail started to form beside the first one. However, before it could fully take shape, the shroud dissipated before Naruto fell kneeling on the ground, gasping for air. That was hard, murmured Naruto as he panted. He had no problem controlling Kurama's chakra in one tail mode. However, going into two tails was another matter. He was thankful that he and Kurama were in sync or the bloodlust would end up controlling him. As it was, it took all of his focus and willpower to manifest the second tail while controlling the raging inferno that was a bijou's potent energy. It was difficult. Despite not being able to go into two tails, you still did good, Kit. Kurama quipped from behind his cage, his voice sounding pleased at the result of the boy's training. At Kurama's prompting during the second month of his training, Naruto started training with the Bijou's chakra so his body would adapt to it. Unlike the times that Naruto brought out Kurama's chakra to the fore in the previous timeline, the Bijou was controlling the output and ensuring that both of them were in proper sync so the inherent bloodlust of his energy wouldn't control his host. They had been doing so for a month now, and according to Kurama, Naruto was improving at an astounding rate thanks to his regenerative abilities and willpower. Not really. I still can't form the second tail completely. Naruto said in a dejected tone. Stop that right now. Kurama shouted. You're still ten years old, Kit. Don't expect your body to completely adapt to my chakra even with the hours of training you put yourself through. Remember the first time you accessed my chakra when you fought Haku? You went berserk. This time, you can bring out the first tail while in full control of your mental faculties. If you keep up with this training, I'm sure that you can achieve the fifth or sixth tail when you graduate from the academy. But it was so easy before. Naruto whined. Kurama rolled his eyes and huffed. Duh, it was easy before since your body was already mature enough to handle my chakra and thanks to the pervert's training, you were able to handle more. However, you're currently in your 10, almost 11 year old body so don't expect it to be the same as last time. Keep in mind that you're currently using the chakra of the most powerful bijou. If you were handling Shikaku or Matatabi's chakra then you would have reached mastery already. However, since I am your bijou, well, don't expect it to be easy as last time. Kurama pointed out with a smirk on his face. Fine, fine. Naruto agreed, inwardly wincing at his whining. He was Uzumaki Naruto. Whining was beneath him, damn it. Anyway, when are you going to train me with the chakra shroud? When you can channel three tails of my chakra for an hour nonstop, then you can train with your chakra shroud. Kurama replied immediately. The revelation surprised Naruto a bit. Why do I have to wait until I master three tails to train the ability you gave me? Naruto asked curiously. Despite the ability using your chakra instead of mine, the focus and willpower needed to maintain and use the shroud is similar to channeling three to four tails worth of my chakra. That's how powerful the ability is. Imagine Gara's ultimate defense. Your shroud is of the same caliber and potency, but not as sentient as your sand-using friend. Ah. I guess that explains it. Naruto nodded and understand. So, should I continue training to achieve two tails since it's still early or take a break? How's my body coming along anyway? So far, so good. No damage while maintaining a tail of my chakra for one hour. 
You didn't manifest the second tail because the surge of chakra that came with the increase in power destroyed your focus. I suggest that you slowly adjust to the surge until you get used to it by channeling small bits of my energy after one tail. That would solve your two-tail problem. Karama suggested while letting his chakra lose into his container's coils. I suggest that you go into one-tail mode then slowly bring out two tails bit by bit. There's no rush. If you think that it's too much, stop the flow and maintain the current output. When you're accustomed to the power, give it a bit more juice. I'll give you control this time so you'll get used to it. Thank to your physical training, your body is getting used to the strain. Couple that with your healing, you won't have to worry about your body deteriorating anytime soon even if you manage to bring out three or four of the tails. Thanks for the advice, Karama. I'm going into one tail mode now. Naruto said before a shroud of potent red chakra manifested around his body before turning into a fox cloak with one tail. Slowly, he started gathering more of Karama's chakra for two tails. But instead of doing it one go, he did it bit by bit, observing and analyzing the surge of power that came with his partner's energy. He didn't know how long he was standing there concentrating with the energy as it surged through his body like an inferno, but it was around midnight when he stopped his training and opened his eyes. Naruto couldn't believe it. He spent eight hours in one-tail mode and an additional 25% of going into two tails without his body breaking down on him. Karama was grinning smugly from behind his cage at the boy's achievement. A 12-year-old Naruto yawned as he pushed himself off the bed. He was successful in failing his first two years in the academy instead of just failing at the graduation. Now, he would be starting his first year for the third and last time since he had no intentions of failing anymore. He was now classmates with the future Ricky Nine so he was happy. Naruto didn't waste his two years in failing the academy. Thanks to his judicious use of clones, he would create around a hundred of them every morning, deploy ten of them to the library to read on various subjects under disguise, especially those related to the shinobi arts, while the rest would go back into the clearing to practice chakra control and hunt for some furs to be sold to the merchants that usually trades in the village once a month. He discovered the convoy by accident while returning to the village from his training ground and couldn't help but overhear some of them talking. His curiosity was piqued when one of them mentioned expecting high-quality furs and pelts to accommodate his orders from other countries. Since he needed money for the necessities, Naruto decided to learn the fine art of hunting. He already knew how to hunt, but skinning the animals for their fur and pelt was alien to him. Thankfully, one of his clones was able to find a book on that in the library, so all he needed to do was practice. He screwed up a dozen of times before he was able to do it perfectly. It helped that channeling chakra through a kunai made it so that slicing through the skin was as easy as letting a hot knife cut through butter. He made a killing in selling furs once a month, but he spaced it out since he didn't want to depopulate the surrounding forest of Kanoha of its wildlife. He needed money, but he wasn't that greedy to wipe them all out in one swoop. It also helped that the furs he sold were of high quality since most of them were from the predators in the forest of death. Not only were the furs huge and perfect quality, they were quite durable as well. The merchants were praising him for such items though he didn't tell them where he got the furs since he didn't want his activities to reach the Hokage. After two years, Naruto could safely say that he was a veritable knowledge of civilian knowledge and on the basics of the shinobi arts. He didn't know that reading was quite fulfilling and knowledge was useful for the mundane things. He was able to improve his apartment by doing repairs thanks to learning from a carpentry book, improving his plants and herbs from an apothecary book, hunting, and so on. He was now familiar with the basics of the different shinobi arts and helped him plan out his future training if he wanted to be stronger for the challenges ahead. He noted that he was not interested in Kenjutsu and Jinjutsu, the latter of which was the amount of chakra in his body that it was impossible to achieve perfect control over it and the former for not having the right weapon. He learned some tips to improve his Taijutsu that greatly enhanced his command over Gamakin. Ninjutsu interested him very much and the various books he read on the subject opened up the idea of possibly creating techniques of his own since it was rare to find Winjutsus in Kanoha. 
Being a wind-natured shinobi, his option was to go to Suna and barter a wind jutsu or two if he had something good enough of equal value to trade or come up with his own techniques. He chose the latter which started his intense study on jutsu creation theory and nature transformation. He didn't have any new jutsus in his arsenal as of yet, but he decided to stick with the basics so he wouldn't encounter any problems later. After taking a bath, he donned a pair of black cargo pants, dark blue muscle shirt, and a pair of shinobi sandals. He knew that he was deviating from his usual orange jumpsuit, but he didn't care. Sure, he loved orange, but his death practically changed his mindset. He didn't know why he persisted in wearing a jumpsuit that screamed, Hit me, I'm here, every time he went out on a mission outside the village. He shook his head at the thought before making the usual batch of clones for his daily training and studies. He made a healthy breakfast of eggs, rice, and meat, and topped it off with a glass of orange juice fresh from the forest. He found a bunch of fruit trees a few kilometers outside the village walls and made it a point to take care of them since fresh fruits were a welcome part of his healthy diet without having to buy it from the hateful villagers. He settled down to eat his breakfast as his thoughts whirled on seeing his friends again. It would be weird to see them as 12-year-olds though he immediately squashed that thought since he was the same age as them. The years in the academy was going to be fun. Naruto tuned out Iraka's monologue of Kanova's history. Instead, he was busy thinking about the rest of the Rookie Nine and what he needed to do to make sure that the future where he died in wouldn't come to pass. It was then that Naruto realized that aside from him, Sasuke, and Sakura, the rest of the Rookie Nine played a minor hand in things to come, more so at their current age. However, they would be a great help if they became stronger than they were in the previous timeline. Instead of focusing on all of them, Naruto decided to stick to his team since the rest could be molded by their respective senseis. For now, he needed to decide what to do with Sasuke and Sakura. Naruto turned his head to look at the last loyal Uchiha of Konoha. The Uchiha massacre definitely scarred his soon-to-be brother and best friend. Thanks to Itachi's Tsukiyomi, Sasuke traveled the path of destruction just because his older brother wanted to die by his hand. However, Naruto couldn't deny the fact that Sasuke became stronger because of it though he was sure that Sasuke would be stronger if given the right advice and incentive. Naruto couldn't help but compare Team 7 to the Sanin. Team 7 was definitely similar to Jiraiya, Tsunade, and Orochimaru. Of course, Naruto as the Toad Summoner was Jiraiya. Sakura with her perfect chakra control and talent in medical techniques was Tsunade. Sasuke turning traitor because of a traumatizing event was Orochimaru's counterpart. Naruto knew that if he wanted to improve Team 7 then he would have to start early if he wanted thing to work in his favor. End of chapters thank you for listening. I hope you enjoy this. If let me know if you want to see a part 2 of this series. Hello everyone. My channel has not been growing the past few days and I find the only person that is using my channel is me. I listen to my own story while I am at work. Please help my channel grow by subscribing because I need to meet YouTube partnership requirement of 1000 subscribers. I hope you enjoy this story because I know I will. Round 2, a Naruto time travel story chapter 2. The start of a team. Naruto was now in his second year in the Kanoha Academy with the rest of the Rookie Nine. Since he wasn't acting like an idiot this time much to the shock of Iraka and the rest of the teachers, he made a lot of friends who treated him as part of the group. He didn't bother with the civilian-born children since they were already brainwashed by their parents to stay away from him. However, the clan heirs were new that the shinobi clans honored the Yandame's wish. The blonde Jinchuriki realized that because of this change in attitude compared in the previous timeline, people treated him differently, like Sakura was no longer using his head as a training dummy and Sasuke no longer treating him like a brain-dead idiot. In the previous timeline, this was a normal occurrence since he was so starved for attention that he considered Sakura to be his soul mate and always kept pestering her for a date. This action practically pushed Sakura away from him and was one of the reasons why Team 7 started out so bad. 
This time, however, he was simply friends with Sakura and conversed with her without getting in her way of show he was also making some great strides with Sasuke. The boy was already his brooding self, but Naruto already expected that. However, he knew how to push Sasuke's buttons to open up to him. After their first taijutsu spar, which Naruto was lucky to be paired off with Sasuke, the blonde gave the lone Uchiha a workout he would never forget. He let the Uchiha win by a point. This resulted in the two of them speak. Naruto knew that it wouldn't be long before he and Sasuke would end up training together and he was hoping to get Sakura included in their program to get Team 7 started. Speaking of Team 7, Naruto decided that acting dumb and becoming the dobe of his class would be detrimental to his relationship with his teammates. Sasuke and Sakura were considered prodigies in their own right. Sasuke was talented in the shinobi arts and his mindset made it possible for him to learn faster than your average shinobi. Sakura was similar, her prodigious mind made it possible for her to a civilian stock. If he wanted to bond with the two then, he needed them to see that he wasn't a dead weight. Naruto was currently munching on an anajira he made with Sakura while watching their friend practicing his family's trademark jutsu, the Grand Fireball. Sasuke was on the pier going through hand signs before blowing out a fireball from his mouth towards the river surface. Basing from his memories of Sasuke doing the technique during their battle in the Valley of the End, it came out a tad weak. Sasuke finally decided to interrupt. Yo, Sasuke. Can I ask you something about the Jutsu? Naruto asked while looking at the steam rising out of the water where Sasuke's fireball hit. What do you want to know? Sasuke asked with a raised eyebrow. Naruto couldn't help but give himself a mental pat on the back for a job well done. Their daily spars and talking to each other practically pushed the brooding boy out of his shell. He now saw people as they were instead of treating them as inferiors. Heck, he was talking to his number one fangirl and treating her as a person with Sakura x Naruto pointing out to her that Sasuke wouldn't respect her if he kept acting like a fangirl. Of course, Sakura believed him since Sasuke nodded in agreement. I noticed that your fireball looks a bit small compared to some of the shinobi I saw doing the same jutsu. Naruto pointed out making Sasuke fume. I'm not weak, he snapped at the blonde. I didn't say you were. Naruto snapped back before a thoughtful look crossed his face. I didn't say that to belittle you, Sasuke, but I overheard a Jonin Sensei teaching his team the same technique. This was a lie of course since he was basing the observation on his knowledge of the future and what he learned from many books he read in the academy. Sasuke calmed down when he heard this. What did he say about it? Sasuke asked as he plopped down beside Sakura before grabbing an Anajirai and taking a bite. He inwardly praised the blonde for his excellent cooking. He was getting tired cooking food on his own that came out average. Naruto was really a good cook and was more than happy to share his lunch with them every day. He wondered if Naruto knew a recipe or two on tomatoes. Tom Well, according to the Jonin Sensei, the Gukaki no Jetsu is a C-rank short-range fire jutsu that usually comes out as a ball of fire or like a flamethrower depending on how you mold your chakra. He even demonstrated it and it really came out like a giant fireball. Yours looked like a fireball, but I noticed that you lacked a bit of control with your chakra since it didn't look that solid. And? Sasuke urged, looking intrigued at what the blonde was saying. When his team demonstrated it, it came out the same way though theirs were quite weak compared to yours. Naruto informed Sasuke who smirked. No matter what he did, Sasuke still had his superiority complex, but he was working on it. The sensei then informed his team that if they want to be successful in the technique, or any technique for that matter, they needed to properly control their chakra. L exercises have you mastered so far? HN, leaf sticking and leaf floating. You know that already since we were practically taught that at the same time. Sasuke said with a grunt before swallowing half of the Anajirai hole and chewing on it. Sasuke Kuen is right, Naruto. Are you saying that there are other chakra control exercises out there? Asked Sakura, curiosity in her voice. 
Naruto inwardly grinned while Kurama was giving him a thumbs up for a job well done. It would seem that they would be training together pretty soon. I think both of you know that I frequent the library, right? Naruto asked causing Sakura and Sasuke roll their eyes before nodding. Both of them knew that Naruto was a bookworm, more so than Sakura. Well, last year, I read a scroll on advanced chakra control exercises and gave them a try. Took me a year to get the both down, but I was able to do so. What exercises are those? Sasuke asked eagerly. Naruto chuckled. Sasuke might have his faults, but he was a training nut to the extreme. Not as extreme as Guy and Lee, though. Tree climbing and water walking. Naruto answered calmly. This surprised the two since they had no idea what the blonde was talking about. I take it that both of you don't know what I'm talking about. Both shook their heads in negative, though their curiosity was now at an all-time high. Here, let me demonstrate. Naruto stood up and walked towards the lone tree beside the river that was their usual hangout these days. He wasn't worried about people seeing him since no one was around at this time of the day. The area was part of the Uchiha district and not many ventured into the dead clan's territory without their hair standing on end because of the massacre that happened years ago. This is the tree climbing exercise. Naruto said as he walked up the trunk of the tree easily, defying gravity in the process, and onto a branch with his feet alone. He couldn't help but chuckle at the dumbstruck look the two below were giving him. According to the book, this chakra control exercise requires a small amount of chakra to be channeled to a solid surface for your foot to stick. Too much chakra chakra won't make your foot stick at all. The book said that if you master this exercise then you won't have any trouble learning any jutsu. Channeling chakras to the soles of your feet is difficult since there are no tenketsus there to facilitate chakra release. If you can successfully control your chakra and release it there, then technically, you can release chakra in other parts of your body and always be in Kan Naruto then jumped off the branch to land on the surface of the water with a small splash. The two were now looking at him in disbelief as he stood on top of the water easily. This is the water walking exercise. This exercise uses the same principle as tree climbing, but you're required to channel more chakra below the water surface to act as stilts to keep you afloat. Another variation is to create a solid platform of water using your chakra, but that depends on your preference than an actual rule. This is more taxing than tree climbing because of two factors. One, you need more water, the more chakra is needed to stay afloat. And two, since water is always in motion, you are required to adjust the flow of chakra to maintain your balance. Naruto explained as he calmly walked to his friends before sitting down in front of them. If you follow the Jounin's advice to his team then learning these two exercises would boost your chakra control to manipulate your technique to be smaller how you want it to come out. The two didn't say anything but the pleading look on their eyes said it all. I take it you want me to teach you both? Naruto asked mildly as he reached for the last Anajirai on the box. He already knew what they were thinking and he could practically see the excitement bleeding from their pores. The grin on Sasuke and Sakura's face would make Lee and guys look tame. That was the day that Naruto, Sakura, and Sasuke started training together, the unofficial formation of Team 7. The latter didn't know why, but they seemed to click with Naruto, treating him like a confidant, a teammate. Naruto, however, knew the reason why since the three of them had this bond in the previous timeline. It just took a different catalyst, but it still happened. However, the blonde knew that one. No one was going to turn traitor this time around, he was sure of that. They had been training for a year now, and all three of them were into their third year, with them dominating the entire class much to Irika's surprise. Naruto and Sasuke were competing for the Rookie of the Year award, but there was no animosity between. It was simple rivalry between friends and nothing else. Sakura had no problem holding on to the potential Kunoichi of the Year title since her training with Sasuke and Naruto practically made her one of the best female students in the academy. 
It was half a year into their training that each of them discovered their niche as they shared ideas, interests, and even sparring on occasions to see where they measured up. The trio knew that they were practically the strongest among their peers thanks to Naruto's advice and bookworm attitude, Sakura's research and unique insights, and Sasuke's clan library. After much cajoling and brainstorming, Sakura and Sasuke ended up with training weights, but these were set to a lower level to avoid stunting their growth. Compared to Naruto, they didn't have a bija gifting them advanced healing to counteract the weight's effect, so they started small. Despite this drawback, they still improved by leaps and bounds. They questioned Naruto why his weights were practically double compared to theirs. The blonde simply told them that he had been doing it for three years now, so it was quite obvious that he already got used to it. Thankfully, that lie was easily accepted, making him sigh in relief. Naruto thought that Kakashi would be in for a surprise if all three of them ended up in the same team. Kurama told Naruto that his gut feeling was telling him that Team 7 would still make an appearance though he couldn't explain why. Both simply let fate work its magic even though Naruto didn't believe in a set destiny other than the one you had a hand in. He does believe in Kami though. Thanks to Naruto's knowledge of the future, he nudged his best friends towards fields that they would excel in. For Sasuke, Naruto was able to make him realize that fire wasn't his main affinity. Sure, he was strong in it, but his main affinity lay in lightning, which was quite obvious when the chakra card Sasuke was holding wrinkled spectacularly before burning to ash. Sakura's element was earth since it immediately crumbled to dust. Naruto already knew his affinity but did the chakra paper test for the sake of his friends. He was surprised, however, when the paper was shredded into small pieces instead of being sliced in half. It would seem that his wind affinity grew with his return from the future. Now that they knew their elemental affinity, Naruto and Sakura practically devoured all the shinobi books in the library for fields that would fit them well. Thankfully, Sasuke opened up his clan's library to the two so they spent the weekends researching for ways to gain full control over their elements and branching out from there. Naruto didn't reveal that he knew the Kage Bunshin technique so he stuck book at a time. He, however, contributed his skills in cooking by making them breakfast, lunch, and dinner during their weekend study sessions, much to Sakura and Sasuke's delight. It was in their sixth month through their third year in the academy that each of them finally found their niche in the shinobi arts. Sasuke was an offensive support type shinobi with his prowess in ninjutsu and jinjutsu. Naruto nudged him to the use of weapons making Sasuke give an old Chikudo his grandfather used to own a try. He liked it so much that he started learning Kenjutsu and incorporated it into his training regimen. He wasn't a swordsman, far from it, but the way he handled his weapon showed grace and proficiency that weapon could match. His grandfather's training journal also helped him in gaining mastery over the weapon. In regards to his affinity, Sasuke was training his lightning to gain complete control over it. Thankfully, quite a lot of Uchihas in the past had lightning affinity, so there were plenty of manuals in the clan library he could use to jumpstart his training over his element. He took to it like fish to water. Sasuke, much to his delight, activated his bloodline in one of their many group spars. His Sharingan activated when he was forced to keep up with Naruto's speed, which was far superior compared to his own due to the longer time Naruto trained with his weights, that and he was trying hard to avoid the blonde's attacks since they hurt like a bitch thanks to Naruto's strength training. After an hour of trying to dodge the blonde's attacks, he noticed that the punches and kicks were coming in slow motion. At first he thought that Naruto was getting tired, but that was proven wrong when Naruto shouted that his Sharingan was up and running. He was so happy that he treated Naruto to an eat all you can buffet at a Chiraku much to the blonde's happiness and Sakura's annoyance since the latter was looking forward to Naruto's culinary creations that night. Sakura, with her perfect chakra control, yet limited reserves, was strictly the support type, but she was determined to become an offensive support taijutsu specialist when she heard from Naruto that Tsunade of the Sanin had monstrous strength on top of her hand-to-hand -hand skills and godly medical techniques, all thanks to her perfect chakra control. Sakura was determined to achieve this feat even if it her learning curve to include human anatomy and medical use of chakra. 
She didn't have a hard time getting the materials for it since the hospital was happy enough to encourage her by giving her access to medical scrolls and books in the hospital library. It also helped that she was the daughter of a civilian council member. However, they hit a roadblock regarding her affinity since they lacked materials on anything related to the earth element. In the meantime, Sakura decided to concentrate more on her speed, taijutsu, and medical techniques. She told the boys that she could easily branch out later if she wanted to so she'll just stick to the basics this time around. However, the look in her eyes when she vowed to achieve Tsunade's strength made Naruto and Sasuke shudder since that would make her twice as deadly. The girl was already strong when she found out that her perfect chakra control allowed her to accurately time the release of the energy through her kicks and punches, adding more power to the attack. She wasn't as fast as Sasuke or Naruto, but her put her intelligence to the mix. You get one fierce girl ready to give you the clobbering of a lifetime. As her training partners, the two shuddered at the hell they would feel if Sakura achieved such a feat Naruto was nervous. He had been friends with Sakura and Sasuke for four years now, and he knew that the two were suspecting that something was different about him. Some of the things that happened were out of his control that made his pseudo-teammates and best friends very suspicious. 1. Sakura voiced out that Naruto always healed faster than normal. She should know because she was already a skilled medic in training thanks to her knowledge of human anatomy and her perfect chakra control. Naruto chalked it up to good genes which made Sakura give him a disbelieving look. Second was his massive chakra reserves that both discovered when they saw Naruto bring out his shadow clones. Naruto didn't know that the two were just outside his door when he brought out 50 clones. When he explained the technique, Sakura immediately pounced on his godly reserves. He immediately chalked it up to good genes. He knew that this alibi was wearing out fast if Sakura's looks were in last, but certainly, not the least, Sakura sensed Kurama's chakra in his body after one of his training sessions outside the village walls. They were meeting at Ichirakuraman that night when Sakura commented that she picked up a different chakra signature floating around Naruto's body. The blonde conveniently forgot that those with perfect chakra control tend to be good at sensing them. Sakura might end achieved a minor ability through practice and skill. You know, if you just man up and tell them about me, I'm sure they'll accept you. Your worrying is starting to grate on my nerves. Kurama grumbled while sprawled lazily behind his cage. His host had been going on and off about his friends finding out his biggest secret, not the time travel thing, but being a Jinchuriki to the most powerful bijou in the elemental nations. To be honest, Ku target of the same rant over and over again. Oh, watch out for the runaway cabbage cart in front of you. Naruto looked up just in time to see a huge cart filled to the brim with cabbages about to run him over. He merely jumped, not encumbered by the weights he was wearing, over the cart and landed with a soft thud behind the rampaging vehicle as it ran down the street, its driver screaming his head off for it to stop. Phew, that was close. Naruto said with a shake of his head. Thanks, Kurama. No worries, Kit. Now, let's go back to the topic before the cabbage tank was about to run you over. You've been ranting and raving the same thing over and over again for the past three days. You're starting to turn it into an art form and that's saying something since you don't have any artistic talent in your body. I resent that and I am not ranting and raving as you put it, retorted a rather miffed Naruto. Yes you are and you know it. Anyway, let me point a few facts straight. Sasuke and Sakura found out about you being my container after the Chunin exams in the previous timeline. They accepted it, granted that you didn't come right out and say it, but they accepted you all the same. Let me remind you that your relationship with them in this timeline is way better you had the Uchiha treating you like a brother and you practically steered him away from going down the suicidal path to power. Sakura is also treating you like her long lost brother. You know both their secrets since they opened up to you. Why can't you return the favor? Naruto couldn't deny the fact that Kurama was right. He was being unfair. Sakura and Sasuke definitely treated him like family, both of them sharing their secrets to him as a sign of acceptance. Sasuke was the first one to open up, 
telling Naruto and Sakura about the Uchiha massacre and his drive to kill Itachi, gaining whatever power he could attain to do so to make this dream a reality. Sasuke admitted that he didn't realize it at that time that the path he was taking was a dark one and he thanked Naruto and Sakura for steering him away from it. Sure, he was still aiming to kill Itachi but he was the other one. This time, he was gaining power the right way for the right reasons and Naruto couldn't help but be proud of his brother in all but blood with that statement. Sakura also had her own secrets to tell. She admitted that she was bullied as a child and her family wasn't what people made it out to be. Her mother was a part of the civilian council and really opposed the idea of her being a shinobi despite showing her support on the outside and telling people that she was proud of her daughter to Sakura's disgust. The only reason why she attended the academy was be impressed the last Uchiha, get married, and gain the prestige that came with the name of the near-extinct clan. Of course, Naruto and Sasuke were surprised at that, the latter telling Sakura that he was glad that she opened up and told them the truth. She assured that too that she no longer had such aspirations since she now viewed Sasuke as an annoying brother who needed to be taught how to have fun. The last Uchiha bristled at that remark, but the twinkle in his eyes spoke volumes that he was happy to be Tree Sakura also told them that her mother wanted her to avoid Naruto at all costs since he was supposed to be a demon. She believed it at first, but changed her mind upon seeing the real Naruto behind the lies of the villagers, and her belief was further cemented when the blonde did everything in his power to train her to become a Kunoichi Kanoha could be proud of. I guess you're right. Naruto conceded when he realized that his friends revealed to him the skeletons in their respective closets while he did not. If he was going to strengthen this bond then it was up to him to tell the truth. Let's get this over and done with. Don't worry, kid. No matter what their decisions might be, I'll always be here for you, partner. Thanks, partner, said Naruto gratefully. This was one of those moments in life that he thanked the presence of the bijou inside him. Naruto found Sakura and Sasuke in their secret training ground behind the Hokage Monument, each doing their unique form of nature transformation training to master their respective affinities. Sasuke was currently in a lotus position, deep in sync with his lightning chakra as strands of lightning cocooned him. Sakura, on the other hand, was channeling her chakra to the soil below and letting her will manipulate the ground, causing waves of earth to appear around her like a ripple. Naruto couldn't help but look at the two of them in pride. If they kept this up then they wouldn't need hand signs just to bring out an elemental technique. They could just as easily use their respective elements to do their bidding and mold them for offense or defense with a thought. Hey, guys. Training hard, I see. Naruto said with a grin. He was quick to channel wind chakra to his hands, coated it like a thick membrane, before slapping aside the lightning bolt from a smirking Uchiha that would have electrocuted him if it hit. Naruto was thankful that his element was stronger than Sasuke or he would be writhing on the ground right now. Relax, team. You're starting to get trigger hap just keeping in practice, dope. Sasuke said with a smirk before a rock cocked him on the side of his head courtesy of Sakura. Ouch. Watch where you throw those things, woman. Serves your right for attacking first. Sakura said with a smug grin on her face. She turned to Naruto who was looking at the two of them in amusement. Where have you been? We were expecting you like an hour ago. Sorry for being late. I was busy thinking about something. Naruto said with a smile before his face turned serious which alarmed the two immediately. They knew that Naruto was not his usual jovial self. What's wrong, Naruto? asked Sasuke with a hint of concern in his voice which he didn't show to anyone outside their group. I think it's time for us to talk. Naruto declared solemnly. The wave of comfort he felt coming from Kurama was the only reason he didn't bolt right now. About what? asked Sakura with a confused tilt of her head. My secret, Naruto said as he sat in front of the two who was giving him their undivided attention. I think it would be safe to say that both of you are curious about me, especially with the stuff Sakura observed about my abilities. Both nodded, but it was Sakura who spoke. What brought this on, Naruto? 
You know that we would never force you to reveal your secret if you don't want to, she said with conviction with Sasuke nodded in agreement. Naruto shook his head in negative before giving the two of them a smile. No, I don't think that it's fair to both of you. You both shared your secrets with me in full confidence while I didn't because I'm afraid that what you will find out will change our friendship. I no longer treat you both as friends or best friend. Both of you are my family now, Sasuke as a brother and you, Sakura, as a sister. However, if I want this bond to work then it would be best for you both to know the TR the two didn't say anything but Sakura's eyes were tearing up. Sasuke was wearing his stoic mask but Naruto knew that the team was holding his emotions in a tight grip. My secret is not just your average family secret. In fact, this is a village-wide secret. The Sande made sure that no one would know of this by classing it as an S-rank secret punishable by death. There are only two people in the village that can say it without the punishment taking hold, the Sandame and me. What's the secret that it would mean death if someone blabbed? Sasuke asked, very curious now though he was worried since an S-rank secret was a serious thing. My secret started on my birthday, the night of the QB attack. I think we both know what happened that night, right? It's discussed in history class, after all. The two nodded. However, that is not the whole truth. You see, the QB is a force of nature and there is nothing man can do to beat it. You got that right. I'm not an IT, I'm a M. Not now, Karama. Naruto chatted his tenant. Anyway, to make the long story short, the Yandame didn't kill QB. He sealed it in a baby. Tell me, Sakura, when did the QB attack? October 10th. Sakura answered immediately. And when is my birthday? Naruto asked rhetorically. Everyone knows your birthday is October. Sakura trailed off, finally connecting the dots. From Sasuke's paling face, it was quite obvious that he got it too. The Yandame sealed the QB inside you, didn't he? Naruto nodded, looking down on his lap, waiting for the name calling to start. His eyes were tearing up, but he refused to show weakness even in front of his friends who might not be there for long. However, he was surprised when a pair of arms wrapped around his neck before he was tugged forward into Sakura's chest for a tight hug. Naruto was bewildered by her reaction. Oh, Naruto. Sakura wailed, tears now flowing down her face. No wonder the village hated you. No wonder mom told me to stay away from you. It's not fair. You're not the QB. You're Uzumaki Naruto. Damn right he isn't. Sakura. Naruto started but Sakura had other ideas. Shush. Admonished the girl as she continued to hug Naruto whose tears were leaking now. Sakura ended the hug and looked at the blonde in the eye. Is this the reason why you're afraid of telling us? That we might think of you as the QB and leave you? Naruto didn't say anything but nodded all the same. Baka. Sakura screamed as loudly as she could, making Naruto's ears ring from the pitch. You are not the QB. You will always be Uzumaki Naruto, my surrogate brother. I'm sure Sasuke feels the same way, right Sasuke Kuen? Both looked at said boy who now had tears falling down his face. He didn't say anything, simply nodding in agreement to Sakura's words before scooting over and giving the two a tight hug. All three were crying now, not sad tears, but happy tears, tears of acceptance. They might be not related by blood, but it was quite obvious that they were related in adversity. It was at that point on that the trio's bond solidified that nothing could break. It took half an hour for the trio to compose themselves. Naruto and Sasuke were grinning while Sakura had a soft smile on her face. I guess all of our secrets are out now, said Sakura before giving Naruto a look. No more secrets from you, Naruto Kuen. From what we've been through, our camaraderie together, being a Jinchuriki is not a sufficient reason to forget our bonds with each other. What's a Jinchuriki? asked the confused Sasuke. 
Naruto answered him. The Jinchuriki means power of human sacrifice. It is a term used for people like me who has a bijou inside them, the blonde explained before giving Sakura a questioning look. Where did you get the term anyway? I read the Kanoha library from top to bottom and I'm sure that the word is never mentioned there even once. As far as I'm concerned, the Sande made the word a taboo when he enacted Sakura gave Naruto a smug look before pointing at Sasuke as if blaming the boy for her knowing the secret. Sasuke gave her a surprised look. What? This is the first time I heard of the word. I know that you didn't get it from me, the Uchiha heir defended himself. I didn't say I got it from your, Baka. I got it from your clan library, said a rather smug Sakura. Now this revelation surprised the two boys. When Sasuke gave us access to his clan's library, I researched the Sharingan so I can help him unlock it. This got a thankful nod from the boy. Anyway, I came across a record of sorts from your grandfather, I think. It recorded those who carried a bijou inside them two Jinchurkis for the Nibi and Hachibi. Takigagyu has the Nanabai. Kirigaku no Sato has the Sanbai and Rokubi. IWA has the Yanbi and Gobi, and Kanoha has the Kubi. She looked at Naruto who was looking at her in admiration. She inwardly preened. Did you know that it was also an Uzumaki who held the Kubi during the time of the Shodane? Naruto nodded in affirmative. Actually, according to the lore, only an Uzumaki could safely hold the Kubi because of its potent chakra. The Uzumakis have a potent life force, ensuring that their energies could negate the Kubis during and after the sealing. The first holder of the Kubi was Uzumaki Mido, the wife of the Shodame. The next was Uzumaki Kushina. Naruto controlled himself to avoid the sadness showing on his face D name. I'm the third. So do you know this Uzumaki, Kushina? asked Sasuke who had a speculative look on his face. As far as I'm concerned, she should still be alive if what you said is true. Which reminds me, how in the world did Kyubi get out from Uzumaki Kushina anyway? Sakura noticed the constipated look on Naruto's face and her prodigious mind made the connection again. She was your mother, right? Sakura whispered, but it was clear that Sasuke and Naruto heard since both had their own reaction to that, Sasuke in shock while Naruto had a sad look on his face before letting out a breath. Yes, according to the stories, Uzumaki Kushina, my mother, just finished giving birth to me when the Kyubi escaped. However, he was interrupted from his story when Kurama spoke in his head. Kit, bring both of them into your mindscape, I'll explain everything. I think it's time for both of your friends to learn the truth, especially Sasuke since he is connected to this. What? You're going to tell him that we came from the future? No. I'm going to tell them truth about what happened during the time of the Shodame and when I was sealed inside you. They needed to know for our mission is to be successful. Fine, how do I do that? I'll take care of it. Touch their foreheads and I'll do the rest. Sakura noted the glazed look in Naruto's eyes and immediately realized that the bijou was talking to his surrogate brother. She wasn't worried because Naruto wouldn't let anything harm him or them for that matter. Besides, she was very curious about Naruto's relationship with the all-powerful Kyubi and was already coming up with questions to settle her excitement. You're talking to the Kyubi, aren't you? She asked immediately while Sasuke gave her a dumbfounded look. If the situation wasn't serious, Sakura would have laughed herself silly. Huh, asked Naruto who just finished talking to Kurama. You were talking to Kyubi, weren't you? Sakura asked again. Naruto nodded. Yes. In fact, he asked me to bring you both into my mindscape so he can explain everything to you, especially you Sasuke since what happened concerns your family. What? Sasuke and Sakura shouted at the same time. Trust me, Kyubi will explain everything. Naruto assured them. He refrained from using Kurama's name since he knew that his partner didn't like people knowing his one true name. I know I'm asking much, but I ask you to trust me. 
No harm will come to you when you're in my mind. What's a mindscape? asked Sakura, not familiar with the term. The mindscape is the place where Jinchurikis communicate with their bijou. To put it simply, we can say it is a space in my mind where my soul melds with that of my tenant. QB told me that he will explain everything, but this required you both entering my mindscape. How is he going to do that? asked the rather nervous Sasuke. He didn't say, but I trust him. We've been talking since I knew how to talk. Technically, this was a lie, but it needed to be said. He didn't mean me any harm, and I don't think he'll start now. All right, what do we need to do? asked Sakura. Sasuke nodded as well, telling Naruto that he was in. He'll take care of it. Naruto replied before placing a hand on both of their foreheads. He could feel Kurama's chakra leaking out from the cage and into his hands before he felt himself being pulled into his mindscape with his friends along for the ride. Naruto found himself in his mindscape, but he wasn't alone. He saw Sakura and Sasuke materialized beside him. Their forms seemed to have a red glow meaning that Kurama did something to ensure that they would appear in his mind. Welcome to my mind, Naruto said grandly. Sakura and Sasuke looked around, noticing the ankle-deep water and the sewer-like structure around them. Your mind is a sewer, dope. Sasuke deadpanned, causing Sakura to giggle. You know, I noticed the same thing. Naruto wasn't surprised that Kurama spoke, but Sasuke and Sakura quickly turned to look at the direction where the voice came from, coming face to face with a very large cage with an equally large QB grinning down at them. Welcome, Achiha Sasuke, Haruno Sakura. Uh, H hello, stuttered Sasuke, fear gripping his body as he faced the almighty QB in front of him. Sakura was speechless. Stop scaring them, partner. Naruto chided. Destroy my fun, why don't you? Kurama pouted. I don't think acting the almighty QB in front of them would allow us to have a decent conversation, you know. The blonde pointed out. Kurama huffed. Fine. Be that way. Welcome to my prison Uchiha Sasuke and Haruno Sakura, said Kurama before giving the two of them a friendly smile. I would like to thank the both of you for accepting Naruto despite knowing the burden he carries within him. Sasuke and Sakura were shocked that the Kyubi was thanking them. Naruto rolled his eyes and poked the two of them with a finger causing the two to shriek. Hearing Sasuke shriek caused Naruto to laugh with Kurama not far behind him. This is rich, Sasuke shrieking like a girl. Naruto managed to say out loud while trying to rein in his laughter. I'm with you, Kit, this is the first time I heard an Uchiha shriek. To be honest, it restored my faith in the world. Shut up, the blushing Uchiha all but screamed before a look of horror appeared on his face. Um, except you, almighty Kyubi. No worries, Sasuke. To be honest, I'm quite surprised to see an Uchiha showing emotions and speaking normally unlike the usual grunt and growl, said Kurama with a chuckle before turning serious. I didn't bring the two of you here to share jokes though that can come later. I guess the both of you want to learn the truth behind my attack of Kanoha during the time both nodded. Then listen well, Uchiha, Haruno, for this is the truth of what happened. Kurama boomed in his powerful voice. Mostly you, Sasuke, since my appearance is directly linked with your family line, the Uchiha clan. End of chapter 2 comment and let me know what you think of this story. Also let me know if you want a part 3. Round 2, A Naruto Time Travel Story Chapter 3 Manipulating the Future Kurama relaxed in his cage, sitting on his haunches. He looked in front of him to see Uchiha Sasuke and Haruno Sakura hanging onto his every word. He inwardly grinned. Finally, the truth will be revealed and he hoped that this sharing of trust would prove valuable to their mission. In order for you to understand my presence during the battle between Senju Hashirama and Uchiha Madara in a place now called the Valley of the End, you need to know the history of the Bijou and how we came to be. Kurama started telling his story. 
You may ask your questions once I am done, and I will hold nothing of the truth from you except those that I deem too personal for you to know. Agreed? Seeing two nods, Karama started his story. Before the shinobi world came to be, even before the elemental nations came about, the world was plagued by a powerful force, a primordial evil called the Jubi. Th this powerful force of darkness terrorized the world, raising and destroying everything in its path until one man blessed with the eyes of Kami appeared and put an end to its rampage. Using the power of the Rinnegan, the most powerful jujitsu in the world, the Rakudos and Nain battled the Jubi on equal terms, both not budging an inch in their struggle days the battle waged, the face of the land being reformed with their power. However, in a desperate attempt to end the Jubi's rampage, the Rakudos and Nain used the power of his eyes to seal the power and soul of monster within himself while imprisoning its body in a tomb in the sky, the moon. Thus the legendary Rakuto Sanin became the first Jinchuriki. Years passed as the Rakuto Sanin traveled while holding the power of Jubi at bay. Thanks to the powers gifted to him by Kami, he did this easily as he shared the secrets of Chakra to the world, giving birth to the Shinobi nations and the elemental countries. T time went on and the Rakuto Sanin gave birth to three sons. These three sons were given a part of his power. The eldest was given his eyes, the middle was given his coming presence, the youngest, however, was given his body's vitality. This gave birth to the three great clans, the Uchiha, the Senju, and the Uzumaki. Uchiha and Senju didn't see eye to eye because of their beliefs despite the teachings of their father. The Uchiha believed that peace can be acquired through power. Senju believed that peace comes if people love and care for each other. Uzumaki backed Senju in this, starting the rift. The brothers went their separate ways, each building their respective clans as what you see today. When the Rakuto Sanin was on death's doorstep, he knew that if he died, the Jubi would be released. To avoid such catastrophe, he used his godly powers to create nine bodies and separated the Jubi's power and placed them into these bodies before breathing life into them. Thus the tailed beasts were born. Kurama paused in his speech and looked at the captivated audience below him. Even his partner didn't know the truth and this was like hitting two birds with one stone. He grinned. Let's move time forward to the battle of Senju Hashirama and Uchiha Madara. Unlike popular beliefs, I didn't aid Madara in attacking the Shodame. In fact, I was brought under his control using the power of the Sharingan, a mutation of the Rakuto Sinan's gift to his eldest son. While Hashirama had the power to suppress Abiju's energy, gaining control of them by inhibiting their lust for battle, Uchiha Madara's eyes had the power to place a powerful Jinjutsu on Abiju, letting them feel rage and bloodlust, thus gaining control of us through our primal instinct. The battle raged on but the Shodame was able to destroy the connection between me and Madara, breaking his control over me. As I gained my sanity, Uzumaki Mito used a powerful sealing technique to imprison me inside her body, making her my first Jinchuriki. Madara was defeated and unlike popular beliefs, he is still alive. This revelation shocked Sasuke and Sakura, but Naruto already know this. Thankfully, the two didn't say anything but continued to listen to Kurama's story. Mito knew that Madara was still alive, and if I was ever released upon her death, then there was nothing stopping the Uchiha Patriarch in controlling me again. Such is the case, she summoned another Uzumaki to become the next Jinchuriki. Thus, Uzumaki Kushina came into the scene. When Kushina gave birth to Naruto, all of her energy was diverted to childbirth, causing the seal holding me inside her to weaken. However, the Yandame and Sandame Hokage used their chakra to strengthen the seal, ensuring that I stay inside and away from Madara's reach. However, Madara learned of the location and immediately attacked. While everyone was concentrating on Kushina, Madara took Naruto as hostage, threatening to kill him if they so much as move and strengthen the seal holding me at bay. However, the Yandame attacked the man using his famed technique and Naruto was freed from his clutches. But, this gave Madara an opening to yank me out, causing me to appear outside of Kanoha before he appeared and took control of me once again. This is the reason why I attacked Kanoha for the second time. 
However, the Yandame already hatched a plan and with Kushina's permission, used Naruto and Uzumaki descended to become the third Jinchuriki. However, the Yandame took it one step further. Since he knew Madara was still alive, he made sure that Kanoha would have a surprise if the man decided to appear. He used the forbidden Shiki Fujin to summon the Shinigami as a catalyst to the ceiling. He let the Shinigami devour my Yin Chakra while sealing my Yang Chakra into Naruto. However, I was still under the throes of Madara's control so I immediately attacked Naruto upon his command. However, the Yandame and Kushina used their bodies to shield Naruto from my attack, getting impaled in the process. Kushina materialized her special chakra chains to subdue me once again. With that, the Yandame finished the sealing process and completely placed me inside Naruto. He turned to Sasuke who now had tears flowing down his face. Sakura was bawling her eyes out, hugging Naruto for all she was worth. Kurama was inwardly happy that Naruto found true friends in this timeline. Uchiha Kurama called Sasuke's attention. Madara is still alive. I am sure and I will bet all my tales that he had something to do with the clan being massacred. I don't know the truth, but I am sure that your brother knows. If you want to know the reason why your clan is gone, seek Itachi out. However, do so with your friends beside you and they will make sure that you'll be successful in this endeavor. Sasuke stayed rooted on the spot, his face and eyes a myriad of emotions due to the revelation. However, these emotions disappeared to be replaced by a determination that rivaled Naruto's will of fire. He placed a fist on his chest and looked at Kurama's eyes without fear. You have my promise, Kyubi-sama. I pledge that I will remain true to my brother, Naruto, and sister, Sakura. I will seek Itachi and learn the truth why my family was wiped out. I promise that I will not fall into darkness, but I will rely on my own power and the strength given to me by my friends to see this done. Sasuke declared. He was vaguely aware of Naruto and Sakura flanking him, a hand on each of his shoulders. All three of them looked at Kurama with determination, sealing their pledge. Good. I hate all Uchiha, but seeing you stick to my container proved your worth to me. You might be the first Uchiha to gain my respect. Listen well, Uchiha Sasuke, stick to your pledge and I will always be there along with my container to aid you in your struggles. Break the pledge and I will destroy you when I am free from my partner's hold. This I promise. Sasuke didn't flinch at the threat, but simply nodded, his determination growing stronger than ever. Now that you know the whole story, if you have questions, this is the time to ask them. I can't maintain this connection long without your body being harmed. Only Naruto is immune to my chakra being my container and an Uzumaki. Kurama informed them. Speak your questions, Sakura, Sasuke. Do you know who Naruto's father is? Sakura asked immediately, gripping Naruto's hand with her own. She didn't see Naruto's shocked expression because she was staring intently at the bijou in front of her. Kurama looked at her, spotting Naruto's expression, before shaking his head. No, I don't, Haruno Sakura. The seal Mito applied on Kushina and ensured that I am not aware of the outside world. I don't know who Naruto's father is, but I'm sure the time will come when this truth will be revealed, said Kurama while giving Naruto a pointed look. Naruto glared at his partner for putting him in this predicament before looking at the faces of his surrogate brother and sister. He knew that the two suspected that he knew. He sighed. Yes, I do know who my father is. Naruto said before a wry smile appeared on his face. After all, the Yandame wouldn't be much of a Hokage if he chose another to contain Kyuubi if not his own son. Why you're the Yandame's son, asked Sakura while Sasuke was giving the blonde a look. Take away the whisker marks and you definitely get the Yandame. Sasuke said while nodding. Sakura raised an eyebrow at him. Duh, check the Hokage monument and look at Naruto. I'm sure you see the resemblance. Besides, there are only two blondes in Kanoha, the Yandame and the Yamanakas. I think we all know which one Naruto hailed from. Smart, team. Naruto said with a smirk before his face turned serious. 
I hope you keep this information, guys. The Sandame doesn't know that I know about my parents and QB. As far as he's concerned, I'm just a clueless academy student. Fine. We will keep your secret. Besides, IWA would practically declare an all-out war with Kanoha if they found out that the Yandame had a son. Sakura said dryly causing Naruto to look at her incredulously. IWA was the hardest hit during the Third Shinobi War. The Yandame used his Hiroshin to decimate Iwa's ranks. As far as history is concerned, they have a grudge against him and that grudge will surely extend to you if they find out you're his son. He has a point there, partner. Fine. Naruto all but growled causing the fox to snicker. Why do you call Naruto your partner? asked Sasuke, no longer afraid of the bijou who was being friendly with them. Easy. He has my respect. Kurama said with a smirk. I don't hate him and he doesn't hate me despite the fact that I was the reason that his parents are dead and the villagers treating him like trash. In truth, he blames Madara for everything that happened to him. I respect him because despite the villagers' hatred, he persevered and still maintained his determination and the Shodane's fabled will of fire. Also, the Shinigami and Yandame seal ensured that we will be together forever until the day he dies. If Naruto dies, then I die with him with me going straight into the Shinigami's stomach. That is how the seal works. Instead of fighting him, I rather help my host become the strongest he could be. Thanks. Naruto said with a grin. You're welcome, Naruto, said Kurama, returning the grin. Now, our time is at an end. Your bodies need to stop its contact with my chakra. If you have any questions, tell Naruto. I will answer through him. Farewell for now. With that, Kurama ended the connection causing the two to disappear, leaving Naruto behind. Thanks, Kurama. I know I said this once before, but I'll say this again. I'm glad that it was you that was sealed in me, my friend. You're welcome, Naruto. Kurama said with a warm smile before Naruto left his mind to join his friends in the physical world. Naruto felt as if the weight of the world was lifted from his shoulder after Kurama revealed the truth to his two friends, no, siblings. When he returned to the waking world, Sasuke and Sakura immediately bombarded him with questions, mostly concerning the abilities he got from housing the QB no Yoko. With Kurama's prompting to proceed, he explained to the both of them his abilities when using the fox's chakra. He even demonstrated his Jinchuriki mode up to four tails. He told them that he couldn't go any higher because the Kyuubi's potent chakra would be felt all throughout the village. Sakura immediately told him to stop using Kyuubi's chakra since she didn't want Naruto's relationship with his bijou to be revealed and make things worse for him. He also showed them his chakra shroud, an ability he gained for being Kurama's host. The two sparred with Naruto with his shroud activated, the blonde enjoying it and he knew that his siblings did as well. All three of them knew that their training would be taking up a notch after this event. They all have their own reasons for getting stronger, and all three of them would be together as they do that. They ended the day with the three of them going back to the Uchiha compound for a well-deserved rest. It had been a long and tiring day thanks to the truths they heard, and the trio was glad that it ended with all of them in good spirits and their bond as pseudo-siblings stronger than ever. Sarutobi Hiruzen, the Sandame Hokage, was watching the villagers go through their daily lives from behind the window of his office high on top of the Hokage Tower. Despite being free of paperwork for the day, a rarity of days in his book, he couldn't help but feel a bit anxious. The reason was his surrogate grandson, Uzumaki Naruto. It had been roughly three years since he couldn't find a peep of the boy using his crystal ball and a spying jutsu. He would still come and visit for a brief talk, get his orphan allowance, or just to hang out, but any time he wanted to check on the boy, it's like Naruto disappeared off the grid. He placed a targeting seal the boy's clothes so he could find him anywhere in the village to monitor his well-being, and if caught in bad time, whisk him out to safety before the villagers could sink their claws into him. However, one day three years ago, he couldn't find the boy no matter how much he tried. 
It was a week and a few hours that his spying technique failed to find the boy unless he wanted to be found that he ordered one of his trusted umbu, dog, to find the Naruto. Thankfully, the boy was safe in his apartment reading a book. Of course, he immediately visited Naruto to find him just the way his dog described, reading a book. Hiruzen noticed that there was something different about his surrogate grandson. One indicator was that the boy was sitting down and reading a book in his couch for hours without fidgeting. Everyone knew that Uzumaki Naruto was a stamina freak and staying in one place for too long was impossible for the energetic boy. Other reasons also screamed at him as well, like how clean the boy's apartment was, the small number of ramen cups on the boy's cupboard, healthy food on the cabinets, and so on. Heck, the boy was even wearing dark colored clothes and the lack of orange definitely alarmed him. No wonder he couldn't find him through his crystal ball. Naruto was no longer wearing the shirts with the seal on them. He couldn't place a seal on the boy's clothes since it would be quite obvious and he didn't want to alert his surrogate grandson that he was being spied on. After interviewing the boy, he couldn't help but be proud of Naruto's growth. It would seem that the blonde finally lived up to his potential. Considering who his parents were, it was impossible for Naruto to be otherwise. It would seem that the boy loved to read and the lady in charge of the library often told him how Naruto would spend hours reading various books ranging from general subjects to the basics of shinobi arts. However, this report didn't coincide with what happened in the first two academy years. Naruto failed and got held back twice. It was impossible since the Sandame knew that Naruto was smart, smarter than his peers. How and why did the boy fail? However, this question was answered in the following year when Naruto was placed in a class along with the clan heirs. It would seem that Naruto wanted to be people his age so he purposely held himself back since he attended the academy two years early because of a promise. He couldn't help but chuckle at the memory on how the boy performed more than expected of him, stumping the teachers who were already expecting him to have low grades and fail the end of the year test. Oh yes, Uzumaki Naruto definitely had a mind and was already using the age-old basics of shinobi deception to manipulate his way onto a better group. The Sandame was anxious again because of what he discovered a week before. He was in a pensive mood that time and was itching to train his body a bit to get the blood going. He immediately went to his rarely used training ground behind the Hokage Monument for a bit of a warm-up exercise with a clone or two. His training ground, however, was showing signs of use and there were damages all over the place. There were only two people who knew the existence of his hidden hideaway of him because he was the one who made it, and Uzumaki Naruto after bringing the boy there one day to demonstrate a few jutsus since it was the boy's birthday. Judging from the damage, he knew that Naruto was training hard and he could feel different chakra signatures in the area and they were quite fresh too. Naruto was training with someone but the question was who? Sighing, he went back to his desk and decided to find out what his surrogate grandson was doing and who he was training with. Dog. He called out. A second later, a dog-masked umbu was kneeling in front of him. You called, Hokage-sama, said Dog lazily from behind his mask. Behind the Hokage monument is a training ground I built for myself. I want you to go there and stay hidden, spy on anyone in the area, and report back to me. Clear, the aged leader ordered. Understood, Hokage-sama. Do we have a target? Dog inquired. Yes, Uzumaki Naruto and his training partners. If Dog was surprised, he didn't show it. However, the sudden slight tensing of the man's shoulder was proof enough that the name of the Kyubi Jinchuriki surprised him. Understood, Hokage-sama. Good. Dismissed. Dog stood up from his position and melted back into the shadows. Sandame watched the man leave before a sigh escaped his lips. He looked at his table in disgust since it only had been 20 minutes since he finished his latest batch of paperwork and now, there was a new batch waiting for him to go through. This was one of the few times in his life that he wished that he was the one to seal the QB so Minato would have to suffer through the hell that was paperwork. Dog, or otherwise known as Hitaki Kakashi was bored as he stayed hidden using a subtle genjutsu on one of the tallest trees overlooking the training ground the Sandame told him about. 
Judging from the amount of damage in the area, whoever was using it was quite serious and getting stronger. His target was his sensei's son, Uzumaki Naruto. It was good that Naruto was training to become strong in the shinobi arts. The boy should show quite a lot of promise considering that he was born from two Kage-level shinobi that made IWA and Kumo quake in their proverbial boots. If the boy impressed him then he might take the Sandame's offer of quitting Umbu and take up the mantle of a Jounin sensei. If Naruto impress him, that is. He solidified the Jinjutsu hiding him when he sensed three different chakra signatures coming his way and coming fast. He couldn't believe the amount of chakra these three had that even his limited sensory talents picked them up. The largest was above Kage level and it was very potent. He knew that this chakra belonged to none other than Uzumaki Naruto, the Jinchuriki of the QB no Yoko. The others were a mystery. One of them had Ohai Chunin chakra level bordering on Lo Jounin. However, the last one was only at Mid Chunin level, but the smooth flow of chakra meant that this person had near perfect chakra control. The last person he encountered with chakra that smoothed was Tsunade of the San Nin, and the person who was coming towards him was definitely near the legendary medics level. Dog was floored when he saw Naruto and his companions, and he couldn't help but feel faint when he saw the boy look so similar to his sensei that it was impossible to deny that they were father and son. Naruto was wearing a typical shinobi outfit with a few modifications here and there to make it his own. He was wearing tight black pants and a muscle shirt. Instead of a Jounin vest, Naruto was wearing something similar, but it was definitely customized since it didn't have enough pockets for scrolls. Aside from a pair of shinobi sandals and metal-plated fingerless gloves, the most shocking was the Hayori Naruto was wearing. It had red flames on the edges, the Uzumaki symbol with nine writhing tails, looking like a miniature red sun, on his back. Considering that Naruto let his hair grow, bangs framing the side of his face making him the spitting image of the Yandame Hokage. He wondered if the boy knew of his parentage. If not then the boy definitely was a Minato clone right from the get-go. The next he noticed to enter the clearing was Uchiha Sasuke, which was a surprise since he knew of the boy's attitude towards people after his clan's massacre. He was further surprised when the boy showed a familial treatment and camaraderie with his sensei son. He briefly wondered if this was an imposter or if his stress level was playing tricks on him. Sasuke was definitely showing the prodigious side he was labeled to be. The boy was wearing a white high-collar shirt with sleeves that reached all the way to his wrist wrapped in a warmer of sorts that looked like a wristband. He could see a seal there, but he couldn't make out what it was. He was wearing a pair of loose dark blue pants and a dark purple rope as a belt around his waist, which also supported the Chikuto on the teen's back. Dog recognized the weapon belonging to Sasuke's grandfather, a powerful blade that was said to rival those owned by the seven swordsmen of the mist and his father's, Hataki Sakumo's, white fang. The last to enter the clearing was definitely Haruno Sakura, judging from the girl's pink hair. Sakura was definitely a kunoichi that Kanoha would be proud of. She was wearing a red jacket covering the mesh underneath. The jacket was tight enough that showed the girl's perfect figure despite being undeveloped considering how old she was. Her pink hair was quite long reaching down to the middle of her back, her bangs framing the side of her face, similar to Naruto, not spiky but rather tamed. Her lower apparel includes a red apron skirt and tight black shorts that stop just above her knee. Instead of shinobi sandals, Sakura was wearing a high-heeled combat boots. Her hands were covered by gloves similar to Naruto, but this one was in red compared to the blonde's black. All in all, the trio was a sight to behold, but a shinobi was more than just looks. Dog was practically giddy with excitement as he appeared kneeling in front of the Sandame Hokage with his report. It was going to be a report to give the aged leader a heart attack. Not only was he impressed by the trio's mock spar, their skills would make the current Jin and teams pale in comparison. Oh yes, he, dog, Hataki Kakashi, was impressed, very impressed. He definitely want this team for himself, by hook or by crook if need be. Dog, reporting in from reconnaissance mission, Hokage-sama, said Dog, excitement clearly evident in his voice that made the Hokage raise an eyebrow in question. 
from your tone, I can definitely say that you found Naruto's training quite a sight, a dog, said the aged leader in a deceptively mild tone though there was a hint of curiosity there as well. Definitely, Hokage-sama. But before I proceed with my report, I would like to accept your proposition of me becoming a Jounin sensei Dog said immediately. He wanted to get this done as soon as possible, his future team was at stake. This surprised the Hokage since Kakashi was well known to be lazy when it came to picking out a team. He was given a team two years ago, but they failed miserably in his famed bell test and causing him to return to Umbu once again. This time, it was quite a rare sight to see Kakashi excited in having a team of his own. That's a surprise. I take it that the reason for your sudden acceptance in taking a Jinin team is due to what you saw on my training ground, the Hokage asked. Yes, Hokage-sama, agreed Kakashi before letting out a giggle which made the Hokage's jaw drop. Very well. As of now, you resigned from your post in Umbu. Take off your mask, Kakashi. Kakashi took off his dog mask and placed it on the Hokage's desk. A grin was quite visible from behind his face mask and his visible eye was showing excitement that the Hokage haven't seen in a very long time. Report, Kakashi. Um, before that, Hokage-sama. Can I ask for your permission to take in Uzumaki Naruto, Uchiha Sasuke, and Haruno Sakura in the formation of Team 7 as a frontline heavy-duty assault squad? This surprised the Hokage since Kanoha hadn't had such a squad since Kakashi's time as a genin under Minato. He definitely needed to hear why this three soon-to-be genins made such a mark on the famed Sharingan no Kakashi. Why, he asked, no, urged Kakashi to explain. It's simple, Hokage-sama. The three are way more powerful than their peers. From their spars, and I use the word lightly, each of them are already made to Haichunin in strength. Together, they would become a terror in the battlefield. If their teamwork and skill set is of any indication, I can safely say that they can easily bring down an A-rank Jounin with ease. What? Explain, Kakashi. Now, let me start with Haruno Sakura. Despite coming from a civilian family, the girl definitely has a mind on her. She could come up with tactics on the fly that would make Anara proud. It would seem that her training with Sasuke and Naruto made her what she is now. She has Michunin Taijutsu, no ninjutsu to speak of, but she did one thing that cemented my decision to have her on my team. She demonstrated perfect chakra control that allowed her to perform advanced medical techniques and she has, in some way, replicated Tsunade-sama's super strength technique on a small scale, but I'm sure that it would continue to improve as they train. Saratobi's face showed shock that Kakashi was tempted to rouse the old man and take him to the hospital before he suffered a heart attack. With good reason too, for a civilian academy student to be a powerful medic and replicated Tsunade's strength, this was impossible. Kakashi took the Sandame silence as a prompt to continue, so he did. The next is Uchiha Sasuke. We can throw his psyche profile into the bin since the boy is acting like any regular teen would. I don't see the brooding boy when he was brought out of the hospital after the massacre. He is cheerful and is practically a daredevil in the battlefield. He is well versed in his clan's taijutsu style and his speed is amazing. He has a large repertoire of fire jutsus, but the most commendable skill he showed was his unparalleled use of lightning. He could fire lightning attacks without hand signs and use it with his grandfather's chikudo the same way Asuma does with his trench knives. Kakashi said excitedly, he was on a roll now. Oh, before I forget, Sasuke has a fully developed Sharingan, just in case you're curious. Saratobi didn't know how many more shock he could take and he knew that Kakashi's report on Naruto would practically push him to retirement. He held up his hand to halt the one-eyed Jounin's report, opened a drawer to take out a sake bottle, popped open the lid and took a long drink without bothering with a cup. He took three more shots before placing the bottle on the table and beckoned for the Jounin to continue. He braced himself for the revelation that was to come, his hand planted firmly around the bottle since he knew he would be taking a long drink again soon enough. I don't know what to say about Naruto, but you can be sure that he is definitely Sensei's son. 
The boy is a wind user, and he has control over it similar to Sasuke with his lightning though his techniques bordered on defensive as compared to the Uchiha. His taijutsu style is perfect, able to switch to offense and defense in a blink of an eye. I also noticed that he trained with weights since he was very fast during their spars. However, the most surprising thing was his use of Kyuubi's chakra. What? shouted Saratobi before taking a long drink of sake. His nerves were starting to get out of whack. Explain, Kakashi. Naruto can use the Kyuubi's chakra. However, he doesn't show any negative reactions towards it. When he channeled the Bijou's energy, I immediately uncovered my Sharingan to stop it. However, it wasn't needed since the boy handled it like a pro. Heck, there wasn't even any visible sign he was using Kyuubi's chakra. I felt it and I only saw it when I used the Sharingan. What did he use it for? The Sandane curiously asked. He made a mental note to pen a letter to Jiraiya to return to Kanoha immediately and have him check Naruto's seal. He stiffened when he realized that Naruto already knew of the Kyuubi. He definitely needed to have the Toad Sage back as soon as possible. He created three Kage Bunshins and injected Kyuubi's chakra into them. I think the reason he did so was to make them durable since they lasted all throughout the one hour spar, taking hits and returning them without dispelling. Kakashi said dryly. He, he knows the Kage Bunshin? Sandame said shocked. He took another drink. Thankfully, he had another bottle since the one he was using now was running low. Oh yes, he can even bring them out without the hand sign. I don't know how many he can make, but he made three easily without signs of exhaustion. Heck, I can barely make three without succumbing to chakra exhaustion. Kakashi mused. Anyway, it would seem that Naruto inherited an ability from Kyuubi since he formed a shroud of chakra that covered his body from head to toe, but using Naruto's natural chakra though this one had a foe-like appearance. The Shroud of Chakra acts as an ultimate defense since any technique the clones hit him with was either repelled or absorbed. The curious thing is Naruto's ability to manipulate the Shroud that he could control it like an extension of his body. Sarutobi finished off the last of the sake and threw the empty bottle outside the window, ignoring the startled yelp from a shinobi below. He took the other one from his drawer and started drinking. He finished half of it before he felt his nerves relaxing slightly. Are you sure that Kyuubi isn't influencing Naruto? Saratobi asked immediately, miraculously still sober even from the amount of sake he ingested. Definitely, Hokage-sama. As we all know, Jinchurikis shows a visible sign when they use their tenant's chakra. The most reported case is the Hachibi and Nibi. Naruto expertly used the Kyuubi's chakra and channeling it without succumbing to its power. Besides, he didn't use it in battle, only to make his clones durable. I'm am curious as to how he found out about the Bijou considering no one is be stupid enough to tell him with your S-rank protocol in place. Kakashi theorized. If I was to hazard a guess, he either discovered it on his own which I find unlikely or he heard it from a villager as he passed by. Either way, it would seem that Sasuke and Sakura also know of Naruto's status as a Jinchuriki since Sakura mentioned how durable the clones were and Naruto explaining why they were so. They accepted him, Hokage-sama. Sarutobi was inwardly relieved by Kakashi's report. He frowned when learning that Naruto knew of the Kyuubi, much less using the Bijou's chakra. However, finding out that his friends knew of his status as a Jinchuriki and accepted him almost brought tears of relief to his eyes. He decided to have a talk with Naruto after he graduates from the academy in three days' time. He was sure the boy would graduate considering that he impressed Kakashi enough to request a team. Good. If you want to shadow them until team assignment then you may proceed. However, don't reveal your presence as of yet since we don't want them to know that we are on to them. I approve of your request as a team, but I have a few conditions. Saratobi said the last part with an ominous tone in his voice which made Kakashi gulp. What conditions, Hokage-sama? 1. You are not allowed to be lazy. If your team is as good as you say they are then I want you to train with them every day. 
I think it's fine time that you get out of your A rank status and finally take your place as an S rank shinobi. You will train yourself and team 7. So this means you must always be on time. Agreed? Agreed, Hokage-sama, said Kakashi immediately since he was looking forward to sparring with his future team. Condition 2, I want you to make sure that they finish the required D-rank. Since this is going to be an assault and frontline combat team, I want them cleared for C and B-rank missions as soon as possible. We will still follow the protocol for 20 D-ranks before C-rank so make sure that they get it done in the soonest possible time. Clear. Anything else? Kakashi was getting excited now. Last, but not the least, I want your students to take personalized lessons from people I select. Naruto will be Jiraiya's since only my student can teach him how to control QB's power and check on his seal. You will take care of Sasuke and make sure that he knows the in and out of his Sharingan. Sakura, on the other hand, will be trained by a medic of my choosing, or if I'm successful, I will have Tsunade return to the village and give Sakura lessons. If what you say is true, then the best person to get Sakura's strength up to snuff is Tsunade herself. Are you alright with this? Kakashi thought about it for a few seconds before nodding. I agree to the last condition, Hokage-sama, but I want to take the lion's share of my team's time. We can make a schedule for their lessons, let's say twice a week, the one-eyed Jounin suggested. Agreed. Saratobi nodded before nudging at the door with his chin. Now get out of here. This has been a long night for me, and I have plans of getting plastered with sake tonight. He left. Sakura shouted to the group who immediately stopped their three-on-three -three spar. Naruto quickly dispelled the clones, mentally assimilating the battle from his clone's point of view, while Sasuke patted the dust off his clothes. You think he bought it? I'm sure he did. Naruto assured her. I'm glad you practiced your chakra sensing technique, Sakura. We wouldn't have found out about the umbu if you didn't warn us first. Are you sure that it's going to work? Asked Sasuke while inspecting his Chikuto for any nicks on the edge, happy that he didn't find any before returning it to its sheath with a practiced move. He just had the thing repaired last week since it suffered a nick or two while pitting it with Naruto's wind-covered kunai. Quite. I know how Kanoha make their genin teams and the main requirement is teamwork. If we show the Hokage that we are already a team then there is a big possibility that we are going to be assigned together without following the grade system. If that doesn't work then I can convince Hokage Gigi to put us in the same team. Naruto said with a cheeky grin on his face. Sasuke shook his head in both exasperation and disbelief. You have balls of steel, dope. I think this is the first time that some called the Hokage Gigi. Sasuke said with a smirk. Hey, I have you know that he's always been my grandfather. He took care of me after all. Naruto defended himself before huffing. Sure, Naruto Kuen. We know that, said Sakura before giving the blonde a pinch on the cheek. Naruto swatted her hand away since the pinch was starting to become painful. Damn her superhuman strength. She was using it subconsciously now. Away, devil woman. Away. Naruto exclaimed before realizing his mistake. He saw Sakura twitching as he edged away from her. Um, Sakura-chan. You know I didn't mean it, right? Naruto. Shit. Sasuke was happily munching on a dango while looking at the scene in front of him. Sakura had an irritated scowl on her face, arms crossed over her chest while looking down at a severely bruised and battered Naruto lying in the middle of a crater by her feet. He shuddered since he knew how strong Sakura was. He could feel phantom pain lancing throughout his body as he imagined getting pummeled by the pink-haired girl in Naruto's place. It wasn't a pleasant thought. So, any plans regarding the graduation test? Sasuke asked as he threw the stick towards a tree like a sunbon, spearing a falling leaf along the way before embedding itself on the trunk with the rest of its kin, completing the Uchiha clan symbol he was aiming for. What's the plan about? 
there's the written exam, taijutsu and ninjutsu portion, and, um, the weapons throwing I guess, replied Sakura as he she ran a hand coated with healing chakra on Naruto's bruised form. She knew that the blonde was already mending, but the boy was definitely unconscious. She placed a hand on his temple and nudged the brain awake with her chakra causing the blonde to groan. Ow, what hit me? Naruto said with a groan. I did, Baka Naruto. Sakura said with a huff before a wry smile crossed her face. She helped his surrogate brother off the ground and patted him free of dust. How are you feeling? Like QB using my body as a trampoline. He muttered under his breath. Now that's a thought. Karama mumbled in Naruto's mind, finding the idea a fun thing to do to his partner. Hush you. Naruto chatted his tenant. What were you guys talking about? Graduation exam in three days time. Sasuke replied while pulling out three sticks of dango from the storage seal on his wristband and throwing one each to Sakura and Naruto, both catching it with ease. Naruto gave his surrogate brother a questioning look. What about it? He asked before taking a bite out of the sweets. Aren't you curious about the graduation exam? Sasuke pointed out, not understanding why his surrogate brother was unconcerned of the coming exam that would shape their future. I already know what the exam entails. Naruto said dismissively, eating the last of the dango and obliterating the stick with wind chakra channel to his fingers, slicing them to fine pieces. This revelation made Sakura raise an eyebrow at him. Trust me, we're going to breeze through the thing that it's not funny. Do tell. Sakura urged. Let me see. Naruto started, started ticking off the list with his fingers. There's the written portion of the exam composed of a 100-item test on history, mathematics, and the basics of shinobi arts we learned in class. This is followed by weapons proficiency on shurikens and kunais. There's the taijutsu portion where we will be sparring with an academy teacher and to survive for three minutes. Then we have the ninjutsu portion which requires us to perform the basic three, kawarimi, henge, and bunshin. How in name of kami do you know that? Sasuke exclaimed in surprise. He knew that Naruto was well informed, but he didn't know it was that much. It was like the blonde had a spy network or something. Easy, I spied on last year's graduating class. I used a Kage Bunshin and had it hinge into a fly. Naruto lied, but he did use that combination before in the previous timeline, but they didn't need to know that. Ah. How is your Bunshin coming along? Sakura asked, concerned. He knew that the Academy clone was Naruto's main weakness since he had too much chakra for the illusionary construct. Not good, but I'll pass easily with Kage Bunshin. The rule states that all we needed to do is to perform a clone. Any clone would work. I asked around and I heard an Aburain passing the ninjutsu portion using a bug clone so I'm cool in using a Kage Bunshin. Naruto assured the worried Sakura. Actually, it was in the previous timeline, Aburame Shino using a bug clone instead of the normal clone. Kiba also turned Akamaru into a clone of his which merited a pass in Irika's book. That's good then. Sakura said with a nod before looking up. Judging from the time, it's almost dinner. Are we going to eat outside or you're going to make dinner at yours or Sasuke's place, Naruto? The blonde thought about it for a bit before answering. There was this dish she wanted to try out. Hmm, I'll make dinner. I remember Sasuke telling me that he harvested a fresh batch of tomatoes yesterday from his private garden. Sasuke perked up upon hearing his favorite. I'm thinking of making a dish called spaghetti I saw in a movie once. If not, I can always make grilled tomatoes and make a salad out of it or maybe. He didn't get to say anything else since Sasuke appeared in front of them and dragged them out of the training ground towards the Uchiha compound mumbling tomatoes all the way. End of chapter 3 please leave a comment or a review. Reviews and flames are welcome. I hope you enjoy the series. Please like and subscribe to help support the channel.
Round 2, A Naruto Time Travel Story Chapter 4 Inheritance and Traitors Naruto casually walked the streets of Konoha, discreetly observing the populace while making his way towards the Hokage Tower. He expected the Hokage to summon him considering how they showed the hidden Umbu some of their abilities and the unrivaled teamwork he had with Sakura and Sasuke. He didn't expect to be summoned the next day though which was too soon in his opinion. Kurama mentioned that it was quite possible that whoever was watching picked up the trace of his chakra being channeled into the clones. Naruto couldn't help but agree with his tenants since Umbu were trained to sense chakra thanks to his lessons with the Toad Sage and the Shinobi ranks. Naruto noticed the glares from the villagers directed his way, some quite obvious in their hate of him while others were being secretive about it though the latter was quite useless to someone trained in the shinobi arts. Naruto remembered how the villagers cheered his name after defeating Pain in the previous timeline. He wondered if such an obvious display of heroics would trigger the same result. He nodded to the two chunin guards stationed at the entrance of the tower, a nod which was returned without hate in their eyes. Naruto was thankful that the shinobi population was either respectful to him for containing the Kyubi no Yoko or ignoring him because of it. It was at this point in time that Naruto wished that Kurama was out of his cage since the Bijou's ability to sense negative emotions would have been so handy, as well as some other abilities when the two of them synced up to a perfect Jinchuriki form. Naruto ignored the secretary glaring at him before knocking on his surrogate grandfather's door. In the previous timeline, he would have just barged in and declared his aim to take the Kage position from the man, but he was different this time. If he wanted people to take him seriously then, he would treat them in kind. That means that the prankster and knucklehead Naruto would have to take a back seat this time around, but would let it out from time to time. Good morning, Gigi. Naruto greeted the aged leader with a smile on his face. Good morning, Naruto Kuen. Please take a seat. We have much to discuss, said the Sandame who was giving the blonde a speculative look while puffing on his pipe. Sure, Naruto shrugged before taking the offered seat. What do you want to talk about, old man? Before we get into that, how are your studies for the graduation exam tomorrow? Saratobi asked mildly, starting with the mundane questions before really grilling the boy in front of him for information. Naruto looked at the aged leader with a questioning look before a sly grin made its way to his face. You didn't really bring me here to ask me that question, Gigi. Said Naruto before chuckling at the sheepish expression on his surrogate grandfather's face. I'll answer that though. I'm prepared for the graduation exam and I'm sure that I'm going to pass and become a genin. So what do you really want to talk about, Gigi? Does this have something to do with the umbu observing my training in your hidden training ground? Saratobi was surprised at the boy in front of him. It would seem that Naruto changed and for the better. He knew that the prankster Naruto was still inside the boy, but it his studies and training made him a serious individual. He couldn't help but be proud of the boy's growth. I guess there's no point beating around the bush, the Sandame said dryly before leveling Naruto a serious look. Tell me, Naruto Kuen, why the sudden change and why did you hide your skills and abilities? For that matter, when are you going to tell me that you know of the QB? Naruto and Kurama spent quite a lot of hours discussing how to twist the truth around the Hokage, both pointing out flaws in the plan until they came up with one that was not only foolproof, but would help them in the long run. Naruto didn't want to lie to his surrogate grandfather, but if he wanted to succeed in defeating Madara and Abido, this was the only way he could think of at the moment. Let's go with the last question first. Why didn't you tell me that I was Kyuubi's container? asked Naruto with a frown on his face. He could see the Sandame looking guilty. Anyway, I have no problems with it old man. I think I know why you kept it a secret from me. After all, it wouldn't do for the demon brat to hate the village now, would he? Naruto, I. Started the aged leader, but Naruto interrupted him. Don't worry about it, Gigi, said Naruto with a smile. I don't hate the villagers. Annoyed? Yes. Hate them? No. I'm just thankful that their hate towards the QB didn't escalate to the point of physical abuse. 
The glares and outright hatred didn't really affect me much since I have people who like me despite my tenet. Anyway, that is the reason why I kept my abilities and skills a secret. I know how the civilian council had you wrapped around their thumb, which confused me a bit since you're the Hokage and Kanoha is a shinobi village so you have absolute power and control over the citizens, not the council. I think they would put up quite a stink if they realized that the demon brat is getting stronger. He ignored the surprised look on the old man's face before it turned into a sly smile. Phase 1, Success Time to move to Phase 2, Kit. I see. Sarutobi said with a nod before his face turned serious. Don't worry, naruto Kuen. I think I know how to fix this. Naruto waved his hand dismissively, as if he never expected it to change, but he knew better. It would seem that he gave the man an idea on how to deal with the village's treatment of him. No worries, old man. Besides, I don't need to worry about it for any longer. Once I become a genin, any jurisdiction the civilian council has over me would be moot since I will be a shinobi under your command. One more day to go and I won't need to hide my skills any longer. Naruto said cheerfully making the sandame to laugh. You are right, Naruto Kuen. You are definitely right on that one. Sandame said with a chuckle before leveling the blonde a serious look. Now, tell me how you know of the QB. Well, that comes with a weird story actually. Naruto started, chuckling as if remembering something funny. You see, I was practicing chakra control in the training ground when my control slipped. I hit my head and passed out. I found myself inside a sewer with a large cage on it. Of course, I was afraid when I met the QB, but it would seem that his reputation was blown out of proportions. Did you know that he was controlled when he attacked Kanoha? Sarutobi was startled. Out of all the things he expected, he didn't expect this one. He gave Naruto a wary, yet serious look. Don't be fooled by the QB, Naruto Kuen. He may be softening you up into trusting him so you would let him out of his cage, the Hokage warned his surrogate grandson. Naruto shook his head in negative. Nah, not even once did the fox ask me to let him out. Naruto revealed, surprise showing on the aged leader's face. In fact, he said and I quote, I'd rather stay in this prison than be back outside for that damn Uchiha to control me like a pet again. Naruto rolled his eyes when he heard Kurama snort from his mindscape. I did see. Are you sure QB's telling the truth? Sarutobi urged, wanting to get as many clarifications as possible since he couldn't detect a smidgen of deception from the boy in front of him. He did bring up a few interesting points, GG. Naruto admitted. Let's go down into history, shall we? With the presence of the Bijus in the Elemental Nation, when was the time that Kyubi attacked anything? Sarutobi thought for it a bit, recalling the various stories he heard of the Bijus. Well, the only time that QB was recorded to attack Kanoha was during the Shodane's battle with Uchiha Madara and the attack on Kanoha during your birthday 14 years ago. Correct. QB said that he had no problems with humans in general except for those who tried to capture him, Kumo being an example of this, so he left us relatively alone. However, he was controlled by Uchiha Madara using his evolved Sharingan to do battle with Shodane Hokage, Senju Hashirama. Kyubi mentioned that the Shodai used a sealing technique to destroy the contract that bound him to the man. But before he could get away, Uzumaki Mito used her prowess and seals to absorb Kyubi and became his first Jinchuriki. Sarutobi was staring at a calm Naruto with a flabbergasted look on his face. He couldn't deny the fact that Naruto brought up certain parts of history that he couldn't deny. For starters, Kyubi wasn't lying in the least. There were only three cases where the demon fox attacked humans. The first was Kumo when they tried to capture him to add to their military might with the two other Jinchuriki in their arsenal. The second was during his sensei's time in a place now called the Valley of the End. The third was during Naruto's birth. It all made sense. So let me get this straight. QB doesn't want to escape from the seal because that would just give Madara the chance to control him again, then a thought occurred to him. 
Speaking of which, how in Kami is Uchiha Madara still alive? Naruto saw his surrogate grandfather starting to get hysterical so he decided to nip this in the bud before the old man suffers a heart attack. Besides, the Sandame's question opened up phase 2 quite nicely. Well, according to the QB, Uchiha Madara is still alive. He just didn't know how. He should be dead since no one can live that long outside the Uzumaki clan who is well known for their longevity. My father and mother confirmed that as well. Naruto answered calmly, already expecting the next question. You know who your parents are, a stunned Saratobi asked, his voice coming out tight and forced. My father is the Yandame Hokage, Namake's Minato, and my mother is Kanoha's Red Hot Habanero, Uzumaki Kushina. Naruto said eagerly. He didn't pretend since he was always excited when it came to his parents. Dad and Mom appeared in the seal while I was talking to Kyuubi. They told me that during the sealing, they included a part of their chakra and soul into the Fuin Jutsu Dad used so they would be there to watch over me until their energy ran out. Mom said that they aren't alive, but simply an echo of themselves tied to the seal. Anyway, they confirmed that it was definitely an Uchiha who yanked QB out of Mom's seal that night. QB confirmed the story that he saw a man wearing an orange mask with a single Sharingan eye who immediately controlled him. I think we all know what happened after that. I think I understand. Saratobi said with a small nod. He couldn't deny the fact that the boy was telling the truth. He was one of the few people who knew what happened that night. It was unbelievable though that Minato and Kushina sealed a part of themselves into their son. Trust the Yandame to think of such things. The man was definitely a prodigy in the sealing arts. So your parents are currently inside you? Naruto's face turned sad. He didn't need to fake this too since he missed his parents very much. He knew that they were still inside the seal, but it would take for him to actually remove the seal tag on Karama's cage for the failsafe to activate. No, the chakra keeping their souls inside me ran out. They told me everything about the Namakes and Uzumaki clan with QB supplying some helpful facts about my mother's family since he knows quite a bit about the famous Uzumaki clan of Yuzushiogakure no Sato. Naruto lied with a sad smile on his face. It was Jiraiya who supplied him with his clan's information. Not much since the others were clan sensitive and only his parents knew of them. I'm sorry to hear that, Naruto Kuen, said Saratobi with similar sadness. Your parents were great people and powerful shinobi. I know they loved you very much. You should have seen your father's face when you came out. He was shouting his happiness for having a son. Kushina was in the same boat too. Could, could you tell me a bit about them sometime, Gigi? Naruto said with a bit of desperation in his voice. He really didn't know much about his mother and father with the short time they had in the seal in the previous timeline. This time, however, he would learn everything he could of his family from the man he considered a grandfather in all but blood. I'd be happy to do that, Naruto Kuen. There's plenty of time for that when we're not busy with our schedule. Maybe we can talk about it over some ramen in the future, promised the Sandame before a sly smile appeared on his face. I take it that your sudden aptitude in the shinobi arts was because of your parents living inside you? Yep. They gave me some tips and pointers on how to get started on my training. They were inside me for a year and they made use of that time to train me as best as they could. Dad would teach me taijutsu and ninjutsu, while mom gave me some advice on my chakra control, physical training tips, and using Kyuubi's chakra. And look, I mastered dad's technique in just a month. Naruto said with excitement as he held out his hand before forming a textbook perfect Raisingan almost giving the aged Hokage a heart attack in the process. You know the Raisingan? Saratobi asked in a shocked, yet odd voice. If he didn't believe the boy before, he definitely believe him now since there were only three people who knew of Minato's Jetsu, Jiraiya, Kakashi, and himself. Of course, he knew how it was done since Minato explained it to him, but he didn't have the chakra control and mentality to pull it off. 
Only Jiraiya learned it since Kakashi couldn't master the third aspect of its creation, allowing him to jumpstart the creation of his two original techniques, the Chidori, and its stronger counterpart, the Raikiri. Don't tell me he taught you the Horatian too? Naruto shook his head in negative making the Hokage sigh in relief. I know the schematics of Horatian no Jutsu, but Dad told me that I need to have a master's knowledge of Fuin Jutsu, make sure my body could handle high-speed movement, and near-perfect chakra control to pull it off. I guess I might be able to do Horatian in the future if I push through with my studies on seals and keep training my speed, which I'm doing right now, by the way. Naruto said sadly. He knew how the Horatian worked thanks to Jiraiya explaining the concept to him in the previous timeline, but recreating his father's famed space-time jutsu was out of his reach at the moment since he didn't have a solid foundation on the sealing arts. He did promise himself to continue studying though, but the lack of books about the subject was a hindrance. An idea occurred to him. Hey Gigi, can you give me some books on seals? I already checked the library and there's nothing there other than the basics. Sarutobi chuckled. The boy was definitely turning out to be surprising Shinobi. Naruto was definitely strong considering who trained him, two Kage-level Shinobi who made IWA and Kumo quake in their proverbial boots. He was astounded at Naruto's growth since with only a year of his parents training him, he turned out to be someone to be reckoned with. He knew that the boy was going to go far. Of course. Before QB attacked, your father brought all of his books and scrolls to me for safekeeping. I was going to give them to you when you made Chunin so you can study them. Your mother also had a few scrolls around that she got from Mito-sama so that is part of your inheritance as well. Since you already know of your parents, I can give them to you. Your parents also have a decent sized property in one of the secluded parts of the village so you can stay there instead of your apartment. I'll give you your inheritance later, alright? Sure thing, Gigi. That would be so cool. Naruto crowed as he couldn't keep his excitement under control. No wonder Jiraiya told him that all of his mother and father's possession was lost since he didn't know that his dad gave it to the Sandame for safekeeping. He was so going to kick Madara and Abito's ass in the future. He could practically feel Kurama's excitement from behind the seal. Kit, you might want to come up with something regarding the Toad contract. You can mention that your father told you about it and to relay it to the pervert or the geezer. Kurama quipped, seeing the chance to give Naruto an edge in battle. Good point. Let me do that now, thought Naruto. Gigi, Dad told me to tell you or, um, Jiraiya about the Toad contract. He and QB discussed it at some length that I would need a key of sorts to complete sync with QB. H.M., I'm not sure what Minato meant, but I'm sure Jiraiya knows something about it. Tell you what, I'll send word after I talk to have Jiraiya meet with you next time he's in the village. Sarutobi offered, not really surprised that Minato gave explicit instructions to his son to make him stronger. Thanks, old man. Naruto cheered, happy that one of his plans was being accelerated. If things work out, he would be able to completely sync with Kurama before the Chunin exams. He definitely needed the extra ace since he and his team would be facing Orochimaru. His goal was to reach the tower before the attack or take the snake idiot down. You're welcome, Naruto Kuen. Now, tell me how far you are in your training. Don't leave anything out. Sarutobi asked the boy who now had a thoughtful look on his face. He didn't know that the blonde was busy talking to his tenant. So, you think I should tell him? I think you should. You know my ability to sense negative emotions. I didn't get any from the old man, so he is trustworthy. Besides, if he knows how strong you are then, he would be more forthcoming. This would also open up a way for you to inform him of Orochimaru's planned invasion during the Chunin exam. I think we both agree that he shouldn't die this time around. Thanks for reminding me. Well, here goes. Naruto said before ending his mental conversation with his tenant and addressing his surrogate grandfather. Well, I started with chakra control after researching it in the library since I can't make the academy bunch in. Mom said that was normal since QB ensured that I have too much chakra to completely control. 
She taught me the Kagebunchen though, so that's good. So Kushina has taught you the Kagebunchen, eh? Sarutobi mused. You should know that Kushina was the one who gave that technique to Kanoha when she relocated here from Yuzu. The Uzumaki clan is well known for their potent chakra. Add QB to the mix then you have more chakra than anyone. Continue please, Naruto Kuen. Thanks for the information, old man. Anyway, I already mastered tree climbing and water walking but I still can't control my chakra enough for an illusionary clone. That was when mom taught Meth Kage Bunshin and its ability to relay information. Let me tell you, that technique is a godsend. Thanks to mom's tip about that, my training improved since I can assign clones to do one form of training while I do others without wasting time. Sarutobi nodded in approval, grinning at how Naruto was able to make use of a chakra taxing technique to his advantage. Good call on that one. I think only someone of your caliber can safely use that technique to increase the benefits of shinobi training. How many can you bring out? I'm not sure. The last time I tried using most of my chakra produced 300 stable clones. Naruto said with a shrug. He could make more using Karama's chakra, but the Sandame didn't need to know that. 300? Uh, proceed. Sarutobi was dizzy. He knew that Naruto had tons of chakras to spare, but he didn't know the boy had that much. The boy was a ninjutsu powerhouse. He wondered if he still have any of that sake left. No wonder Tsunade always drink. It definitely helps keeping his sanity intact. Naruto snickered at the glazed look on the old leader's face. Let me see, Dad taught me the toad-style taijutsu he learned from his sensei, then his Raisingan. Mom tried to teach me her chakra chains, but it would seem that the technique was only unique to her. Dad trained me in my wind affinity since he is wind-natured as well. I can also do basic to intermediate seals, but I need to practice my calligraphy to improve my speed in making them. Oh yeah, Dad also had me train using weights to improve my speed since it is necessary if I decide to do eration, something about the pressure of an almost teleportation destroying the body if it is not accustomed to it. I think that's it. I see. So I take it that you helped Uchiha Sasuke and Haruno Sakura in their training? Sarutobi asked mildly. Learning it from Kakashi was one thing, getting the details from Naruto was definitely worst. Naruto nodded in affirmative. I made friends with the two and they wanted to join me in my training. I used what I learned in the library and during classes to help them along. They already mastered tree climbing and water walking, but they were the ones to branch out with their training. Sasuke is more of a ninjutsu jinjutsu fighter, while Sakura is a support medic and taijutsu specialist with her strength. Let me tell you, that girl can definitely control her chakra. She is a monster. Naruto said with a shudder which was unconsciously mimicked by the Sandane since he knew the feeling courtesy of Tsunade. Oh yeah, before you ask... They know of the QB and they had no problems with it. I know. Mayambu told me you used QB's chakra and how you talked to them about it. Speaking of which, what can you do with QB's chakra and why is he helping you out? QB is helping me because he doesn't want a weak container. Naruto said with a shrug. Damn right, I don't. Karama quipped. That's reasonable, I guess. Sarutobi said dubiously. Who knew that the QB was a vain bijou? He wondered if the demon fox was right in the head. Why do I suddenly have an urge to kill disbelieving old men? Karama muttered darkly all of a sudden. I think you need sleep, Karama. You haven't had any for two days now since you were planning for the future. I think you're right. I'll take a nap. Wake me up if something interesting happens. Good night. It's still morning. You know what I mean, growled the fox before Naruto felt his mental link with his partner end. Anything else, old man? Naruto asked as he made himself comfortable on the couch. I still have training with Sasuke and Sakura in an hour. What can you do with Kyuubi's chakra? HM, I can use a bit of it to strengthen my clones. Actually, that was Kyuubi's idea and it works too. 
I can use up to five tails of his chakra safely without repercussion since he is helping me get used to his energy. He said to take it slow since my body needed to mature to handle more of his power. Being QB's Jinchuriki, he gave me an ability to form my chakra info a shroud that I can use for defense and offense. I trained with it for a while now and it's so cool. I know. Mayambu told me about it as well, said Saratobi with a nod, happy with the answer. He was a bit worried about QB letting Naruto use his power, but he would give the Bijou the benefit of a doubt for now. He needed to get Jiraiya and Tsunade back into the village and it had better be soon. He stood up from his chair and went over to the portrait of the Yandame. He took it off the wall to reveal a safe. He bit his thumb to draw blood and swiped it across the seal on its face to disable the protection. He opened the safe and took out three scrolls before going back to the table. Here is your inheritance, Naruto Kuen. The reason I didn't give this to you before was because you weren't mature enough to handle it though it's safe to say that you're definitely mature enough for them now. Naruto took the scrolls and saw that it was labeled accordingly. The blue scroll had Namakaze written on its face while the red one had Uzumaki, the third one had money. He looked at the Hokage who was writing something on a piece of paper and looked at him when he was done. Those are modified storage scrolls your father made before he passed away. They hold more items than your usual storage seals so all of their books and scrolls are in there. The third scroll is the money they accumulated throughout their lifetime. Let's say that you're one of the richest members of this village and leave it at that. The aged leader handed the paper to Naruto. This is the address of your parents' estate. They had protective seals around the compound, sealing it off to everyone except those with their blood. To open the estate, all you need to do is to place a bit of blood on the Uzumaki swirl beside the gate. The seals will do the rest. Thanks, Gigi. Naruto said with a large smile on his face. You're welcome, Naruto Kuen. My office is open any time if you wish for U.S. to talk about your parents. Good luck in your exam though I dare say you don't need it. Sarutobi said with a smile on his face. Naruto immediately looked for Sakura and Sasuke and found both of them training in their usual spot. The two forgave him for skipping out on training for the day when the blonde informed them of what transpired in the Hokage's office. They agreed to meet tomorrow in the academy for their exam. He easily located his parents' house thanks to the direction the Hokage gave him. The Namakes and Uzumaki clan house was found deep in a forest just beside Training Ground 44, or lovingly called the Forest of Death by the locals. He couldn't imagine why his parents placed their clan home in such a dangerous area, but it was irrelevant since there was a rather large wall that separated his soon-to-be home from his dangerous and rabid neighbors. Accessing the compound was easy since the seal powering the protection recognized his blood. The gate opened to reveal a large two-story home. The grounds were spacious, but needs to be worked on since the garden was overgrown and all over the place. It was nothing a few hundred clones couldn't fix. He toured the outside first, noting the sizable training ground complete with equipments behind the house. There was a fenced vegetable garden that needs to be tended as well since it was similar to the garden out front. A small shed that Naruto knew contained gardening supplies judging from the tools littering one side of it. He noticed that the wall separating the compound from the forest of death was littered with slightly glowing seals he wasn't familiar with. He made a point to look at his parents' journal if available to see what they did and maybe learn them himself. It could be useful in the long run. Naruto definitely liked his new home and his parents definitely knew how to live in style. The living room sported modern amenities and the couch was definitely comfortable enough to sleep on. The kitchen was grand and Naruto had a sneaky suspicion that he inherited his cooking skills from either his dad or mom, possibly both. Everything he needed was there and couldn't help get started. He checked the cupboard and noticed that the food there were still fresh thanks to the preservation seals lining the insides. He couldn't say the same thing about the fridge though judging from the smell coming from it. He continued exploring the first floor. He found a guest room and a mini library that had basic books and scrolls about the shinobi arts. Nothing interesting that merited his attention. 
However, what made him curious was a door lined with seals that wouldn't budge it no matter how much he tried to force it open. Heck, even a raisin gun didn't dent the damn thing. Following his instinct, he bit his finger and placed the bleeding digit on the Uzumaki swirl on the face. It glowed for a bit before hearing an audible click that gave evidence to the door unlocking, granting him entry. He went inside and couldn't help but marvel at the real library of the Uzumaki and Namake's clan. Quite a lot of books and scrolls on various shinobi arts lined the shelves. He excitedly checked them out to discover that his parents were a neat freak. Each shelf was labeled Fuinjutsu, Ninjutsu, Taijutsu, Jinjutsu, and General Books. Heck, there was a small shelf dedicated to summoning contracts and Naruto saw three large scrolls there with the kanji of cat, bear, and wolf. Naruto drooled at the things he could learn with the help of his parents' library. He regretfully stopped checking out the library to move to the second floor. He saw his parents' rather large bedroom and decided that it would be his room from now on. There was another room of the same size beside it and it was sparsely decorated. The third room brought tears to his eyes. It was a baby's room, his room. It had a banner stating Welcome to the World, Naruto, and stuffed toys by the dozens. His love for his parents and his heart bloomed since this was visual evidence that they cared for him even before he came out of his mother's womb. Grinning like a loan, Naruto closed the nursery before exiting the house to get started in fixing his new home. He created a hundred clones and assigned them into groups to empty his apartment to be brought to his new home, clean the garden and vegetable patch, clean the kitchen and the fridge, and buy food and other necessities. He also told some of the clones to check the training ground and to update the place on the latest training equipments. His friends would definitely get a kick out of this. He made a mental note to check his parents' journal to see if they had notes on the security seals on the property. Seeing that everything was well on its way to fixing his new home, he retired to his parents' bedroom to get started on the scrolls his parents left him. Naruto now knew why his parents didn't leave the scrolls in their secured library. The scrolls contained clan-related information related to the Namakes and Uzumaki clan. The money was also quite welcome and Naruto was dumbfounded when his clones finished counting the stash that practically took up half the room. He was a millionaire and made a mental note to drop a few million of it in the bank and leaving the rest inside the scroll for safekeeping. The blue scroll contained information on the Namake's clan, his father's notes on Raisingan and Eration, research on some Fuin Jutsu designs he had in the works, as well as some wine Jutsus his father had been working on. He was giddy in actually having the original blueprint of the Eration no Jutsu since that would definitely speed up the learning of his father's famed technique that earned him the moniker of Yellow Flesh. He still planned to learn Fuin Jutsu though since it was a very useful art. According to a scroll on Namake's clan history, the family itself came from Kumo but relocated to Kanoha after almost being wiped out by a rival clan who was quite jealous of their control over wind. That and the fact that the clan held the counter to the country's lightning affinity didn't help them in the least. Naruto now knew why he had a powerful affinity to wind. It was a bloodline he acquired from his father, allowing them to manipulate wind for both offense and defense without resorting to hand signs. Hiration was actually an adaptation to the speed technique of the clan's wind affinity though Hiration just took it to the extreme. The Uzumaki clan history wasn't really new to Naruto, only shedding a few lights to Kurama's knowledge of his mother's family being a descendant of the Rakuto Sunin. However, the scroll also contained his mother's personal training journal, Uzumaki Water Jetsus, and his mother's sword, Beniheim, were a welcome revelation. He made a mental note to learn his mother's kenjutsu since it was part of his legacy. It was already three hours past midnight that Naruto finally finished looking through the inheritance his parents left him. He decided to call it a night since he needed to rest up for the graduation exam in the morning. He knew that he could easily ace the thing on his worst day, but he didn't want to leave things to chance. Besides, he knew that Mizuki would be making a break for the Forbidden Scroll, so he needed to be in top form tomorrow to bring the man down. An evil grin made its way to his face as he fell into a deep sleep. Ex Naruto was grinning like a lone seeing the frustrated face of Mizuki when he aced the written test and the weapons proficiency test. 
He, Sakura, and Sasuke were practically plowing their way through the exam, doing everything in a perfect way that left their classmates in the dust. It didn't help that the trio were joking around without a care in the world, as if the exams were a joke. The blonde couldn't help but notice Sasuke's fan club giving Sakura a glare as his pink-haired surrogate sister happily chatted with the last loyal Uchiha of Kanoha, him enjoying the conversation much to their ire. Naruto wasn't worried since Sakura could easily handle a bunch of fangirls with her super strength. They'll definitely regret crossing her at this point in time. Naruto couldn't help but snicker when the alphabetical order of the examinees caused Mizuki to fight his two friends who knew that he resented their blonde surrogate brother because of what he carried within him. Sakura practically brought him down in one blow after using her speed to get under his guard while Sasuke toyed with him at first before getting bored of the whole thing and gave the man a cracked rib and bruises with a furious punch kick combo while holding back a majority of his strength. Naruto was surprised, however, when Yamanaka Ino was called before him making her Iraka's partner. It would seem that Mizuki wanted to have a crack at him. Naruto grinned evilly causing the people who saw it to take a step back. Who was he to disappoint? When he was called to the ring, Mizuki was already there waiting for him, grinning as if he won the jackpot. When Iraka called the fight to start, the white-haired Chunin shot forward at max speed. The examinees gasped when they saw him disappear from his spot. To Naruto and his friends, it was like he was moving in slow motion. Their daily high-speed spars definitely honed their sight to the point that they could follow at pinpoint accuracy even when a person was moving at top speed. They knew they still had a long way to go, but they were working on it. So far, only Sasuke could see up to Jounin level speeds thanks to his Sharingan, though that didn't stop Naruto and Sakura honing their instincts to keep up. Naruto dodged a frontal punch that would have caved his face. He continued to evade Mizuki's overpowered blows with a smile which turned into a huge grin when he saw the frustration on the man's face. It was already two minutes into the fight that Naruto decided to go into the offensive since he only has a minute left till the time limit. He ducked to avoid a high kick from the side before kicking the man's exposed leg from under him, causing Mizuki to fall on his back. He didn't give the down Chunin a chance to recuperate. He ended the fight with a chakra-enhanced elbow drop to the man's stomach. Mizuki screamed in pain before blacking out. The entire class was silent at the brutal way Uzumaki Naruto felled the Chunin instructor. Iraka, however, gave Naruto a smile before looking disappointedly at his downed co-instructor. He looked at the class and raised his hand signaling the end of the fight. Winner. Uzumaki Naruto. Naruto was shadowing Iraka since the theft of the scroll was discreetly announced. He was perched just outside the Hokage's window listening to the report before the aged leader dispatched everyone to search for the culprit. The blonde knew that Iraka would find the traitor first since the scar-faced instructor was a sensor and Naruto knew that his sensei sensed the chakra signature of the person who went into the Hokage's office to steal the forbidden scroll of seals. It was half an hour later that Naruto saw Iraka confront Mizuki while the man was about to leave the village walls. A small fight ensued between the two instructors with Naruto deciding to play the wait and see game since he wasn't around this time to distract Iraka from the fight. However, it proved that fate didn't do him any favors when Mizuki resorted to his trump card that Naruto didn't know he had. Mizuki pulled out a vial containing a purple liquid of sorts and downed it one go. The blonde thought it was poison at first, but he was disabused of that assumption when Mizuki's chakra burst forth from his body as he transformed into something similar to a tiger. Knowing that Iraka was in trouble now since Naruto could sense with his limited sensor abilities that Mizuki's energy levels went from Chunin level to Jounin, he decided to butt in and ride on time too since the traitor dashed at Iraka at Jounin level speeds, intent to take the man's head off with a swipe of his now clawed hands if not for Naruto intercepting it. Naruto dropped his weights and used his speed to appear in front of his favorite sensei, grabbed Mizuki's outstretched arm by the wrist and turned, using the momentum to throw the transformed man to the side with all of his strength to smack back first into a tree with a loud crack. Unfortunately for Naruto, it would seem that Mizuki's body was stronger now since it was the tree that gave way. Are you alright, Iraka-sensei? 
Naruto asked Arika, not taking his eyes off the transformed Chunin. Naruto had a sneaky feeling that whatever Mizuki drank was similar to the effect of the cursed seal due to the black tattoos covering the man's face. It would seem that Orochimaru was behind the man's defection and the theft of Kanoha's prized relic. In Naruto. What are you doing here? Get away now. Mizuki is dangerous. Iraka all but screamed but was surprised when Naruto simply gave him a smile. Let me take care of this, Iraka sensei Besides, Naruto then looked up when he sensed two familiar chakra signatures. Cavalry has arrived. What? asked Iraka before looking up to see Haruno Sakura adjusting the gloves on her hand and Uchiha Sasuke glaring at Mizuki with his complete Sharingan and one hand on the handle of his Chikudo. Sasuke? Sakura? What are you two doing here? Naruto asked the two who both leveled him a smirk. You think that we're going to let you have all the fun? Sasuke asked rhetorically but Sakura conked him on the head. Ow! What was that for woman? Ignore the bloodthirsty idiot, she did panned, giving Sasuke a condescending look. We were on our way to your apartment when he heard the news of the Forbidden Scroll being stolen. We immediately went to your apartment but we didn't find you there. However, I was able to find you using your chakra signature so here we are. I'm not surprised you found me but now is not a good time to jump in. Naruto said grimly as he nudged his head toward the tiger-like Mizuki pushing himself off the ground. He saw the man's eyes and realized that the man known as Mizuki wasn't there anymore. There was a feral quality there that meant that whatever he drank destroyed whatever sanity he had to begin with. That thing is no longer Mizuki team. To answer their questioning look, Mizuki roared as powerful purple chakra manifested from his body, shooting towards the sky. Iraka shivered at the amount of malicious energy the man was releasing but was shocked to see the tree newly minted Jinnins not even afraid as they shifted their focus on the man beast in front of them. Let's get out of here, Naruto, Sakura, Sasuke, urged Iraka, prepared to grab Naruto and make a run for it. He knew that the chakra spike would draw the Umbu to their location. Only Umbu can take care of him now. Naruto shrugged before looking at his surrogate brother and sister who both nodded at him, their faces grim. We'll take care of it, Iraka sensei Just relax and watch the show. Naruto said with a smile on his face before disappearing and reappearing in front of Mizuki and gave him an uppercut to the chin. He winced since Mizuki's skin was like metal. It hurt, but he knew that his healing factor was already working its magic. Iraka was awed when Naruto used pure speed that outmatched his own to appear under Mizuki's guard and gave him an uppercut that threw the man into the air. He was shocked when Sasuke used the same speed to continue the uppercut that pushed Mizuki higher. His jaw dropped when Sakura appeared on top of man and punched him on the face towards the ground with a fist laced with concentrated chakra. Mizuki hit the ground with a crash and the force of Sakura's chakra enhanced strength formed a deep crater on the impact site. The trio appeared at the edge of the Mizuki-made crater. A bit excessive on the strength there, Sakura. Sasuke commented as he eyed how deep the crater was, roughly 15 feet if he was not mistaken. He winced when he felt a slight pain on his hand man, did Mizuki eat metal for breakfast? Hitting his face was like hitting one. Must be something he ate. Sakura noted as she healed her friend's hand. Drink actually. It's not over, guys. Naruto warned when another chakra spike came out of the crater. Mizuki's not down for the count yet. No shit. Sasuke exclaimed as he pulled out his chikudo in a reverse grip while channeling lighting chakra into the blade, covering it with highly concentrated lightning. He gave the two a look. All out? Might as well. Naruto said with a shrug. He's not going down that easily if we don't take him seriously. Just don't kill him. I'm sure Gigi wants to have a crack at him during interrogation. Fine with me, said Sasuke before the three of them jumped away when Mizuki suddenly appeared where they once stood and destroyed the ground with a chakra enhanced punch. 
Arika marveled at the teamwork his three former students displayed as they danced around Mizuki and getting under his guard, giving out attacks that would put Chunin's to shame while dodging effectively without pause. Sasuke used his Chikudo with amazing accuracy, piercing through Mizuki's enhanced defense, cutting muscles and tendons that would incapacitate any regular shinobi. Sakura was practically punching and kicking Mizuki with enough force that threw the Mantiger around the clearing, destroying trees and ground with equal ferocity. The academy instructor was surprised when Naruto used what looked like wind blades on his hands to riddle Mizuki's body with cuts and gashes, weakening the man with pain and blood loss. It seemed that everything was going to end since Sakura jumped high into the air, one of her legs raised high in a perfect vertical split. Arika noticed her boot covered with concentrated chakra. Take this, she screamed as she brought her boot down on Mizuki's head, making it to snap down and bringing the rest of the body with him. The traitor's body impacted the ground with so much force that another crater was formed, this time bigger than the last one. Naruto appeared on top of a downed Mizuki with a glowing orb of chakra on his palm before shoving it onto the center of the man's back, drilling away the enhanced skin to reveal bloody muscles and bone underneath. Sasuke made the final blow by appearing beside the man with a lightning-coated palm strike on the spot where Naruto's attack hit. Arika winced when Mizuki released a scream as the pain of the three attacks was magnified by the surge of lightning chakra coursing through his body. Mizuki stopped screaming when he passed out from the trio's unrelenting barrage. Arika looked at the faces of the trio who was looking down at Mizuki with satisfied smiles on their faces. These three were definitely not normal genins. End of chapter 4 I hope you enjoy.